Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and across from me, as always, Hello. Is, the, is the beautiful Callum. <laughs> oh, very kind, <laughs> very kind. How are you doing on this uh, incredibly yeah. cold? It is a bit fresh. Sunday isn't morning. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, good man. Better than what I expected, considering how early it is. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> and it. And how cold it is. But oh. uh, yeah, excited for excited for this one. So uh, mm. yeah, looking forward to jumping in and... Uh, yeah, exploring this uh, this legend, this oh, lore. I know, right? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's been a good one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, as, as people know, we are we're checking out the the Skinwalker. We are, and in by proxy, because if you're talking about the uh, the Skinwalker, you've got to talk about the ranch, the yeah, Skinwalker ranch yeah. as well. So, we will be talking about that as well. We will. But yeah. before we get into that, before yeah, we've got to give a good old shout out to our Patreons. We have indeed. So we've got yeah. Justin over there. Yep, and we've also got James listening as <laughs> and well. And we have indeed, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Thank Cheers, you guys. very much for your continued support, guys. Absolutely. And remember, you can all help support your favourite podcast by jumping onto Patreon, yep. and checking out the two tiers that we've got. Um, we've got the 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 Rambler to start off with, which yep. is what James is on, in which yep. he gets uh, the 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 episodes uh, early yep, before right. general release. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. And that's four pound a month plus VAT plus fat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Justin. He's on. Uh, He's on the Keen Rambler. Keen Rambler, tier. yeah. And uh, with that, he gets uh, an unedited uh, video yeah. of our wonderful mugs. Absolutely, yeah. yeah he gets, gets to s- look at he this. He gets to see all this. Yeah. And, uh, he, and he pays for it. <laughs> yeah. What a madman. Yeah, absolutely. There's, God bless him. Yes. God bless him. God bless Justin. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> but yes, if Justin's on that, he's, he's paying uh, £6 a month plus VAT as well. Absolutely, yeah. So... Jump on there. We've got the links to it on the various different socials. So yep. uh, go over we'll continue there. Continue to share it if you're and, interested. Uh, yeah. yeah, do your best to come and support your favourite yeah, podcast. Please guys. do. Um, but also, talking about support. Yeah. We're here. We're here we in are. Hellfire Studios. <laughs> we are indeed. <laughs> the new and home. Uh, yes, yes, our new home. Well, it's been our home for a while now. It has, yeah. yeah. It's felt like I kind of remember a time when we used to record this over oh. Zoom in. In each of our homes. I know, right? <laughs> it seems so archaic. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. So, yeah. So, guys, as you know, Hellfire Studios is um, Essex's first podcast, film and photography studio situated just 45 minutes from London. Yep. Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. Visit hellfirecreative.com for more information on that, on what yep. they provide. Absolutely. But as a listener of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast, you can also take full advantage of a 20% off discount code for all podcast, video, photography services at hellfirestudio.uk. That's right. So all you need to do is go to the checkout and put in Cryptid, that's C-R-Y-P-T-I-D. It is. And you get your 20% off, guys. Easy as that. Easy as that. Absolutely. Yeah, we do it We do it all for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do it all for you. Absolutely. But um, also... Before we get into it, mm. we have a listener story, don't we? We do, <laughs> which I completely forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maybe. no, we do. No, we do. We no, have. We do. It was, um, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> your face. <laughs> it, was, it was like, have we? Hang oh on. shit, oh, we yeah. have. <laughs> oh yeah, we spoke about that. You said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, don't. I'm surprised I remember uh, my name at the minute. Oh um, blimey. Yeah, so it was. Um, it was really cool. So at the start of um, this week, so we were recording on, on Sunday morning. So around the start of the week, um, I think they sent it on Monday, mm. but I didn't pick it up until Wednesday because it thankfully dropped into the uh, junk mail. Gotcha. And it was just by chance that I thought I'd check it. Mm. And this little little gem was in there. Um, they've uh, asked to remain anonymous because um, they've gone into some fairly specific um details in terms of like where they live and location and that kind of oh, okay. thing gotcha. um but i think it uh, it must have come off the back of the um halloween special oh, okay because it's a, a haunted house Ooh. story Ooh, um i do like a haunted house and it's uh yeah it's, it's really really quite cool so um not that anyone else will know but i suppose apologies to justin i'm i am reading the email straight from my phone so <laughs> <laughs> it was too much to just type out and yeah, that's kind of do enough. it again so well, if it's already written there I suppose <coughs> you could just omit the details that they don't want in there I'm guessing well yeah. and that yeah so, yeah cool. and that um so yes yeah, so this came in from uh, a listener um and it goes like this my wife and I live in a small village in central New York it's a quiet place in the heart of the Finger Lakes region 
The area around us is predominantly cornfields and cow pastures with an ample amount of local wineries that bring in a fair number of tourists during the summer months. We bought our house in 2008. It's an old home built around 1910 and inside you can tell um, as each room has an old cast iron radiator in every room. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary when we moved in. After about a week or so, our daughter complained about hearing voices at night. My wife did also. I just figured they heard the TV or they had overactive imaginations. It wasn't until our daughter's friend stayed over for the first time after we moved that my mind started to change. She visited quite often when we had our apartment and was going to spend a few days with us. That first night, she woke up hearing the strange voices. At first, she thought it was the TV downstairs. But when she went across the hall to the bathroom, no one else was up. The downstairs was dark and quiet. As soon as, as soon as dawn broke and the sun started to rise, she packed her things and left, never to return. <laughs> so, well, okay. Which, yeah, and I don't, I, I, I've, we've not been given ages, um, but from what he says later on, um, I don't think they were that young. I think maybe early teens, right? Maybe okay. so. Well, old enough to be able to kind of figure things out and not be so not, just spooked not like by an eight, eight year old <laughs> yeah like that's it about <laughs> yeah exactly yeah wow yeah. so i think they would I, th- I think so this is just me kind of filling in the gaps yeah. but uh yeah so the, the friend packed her shit and left and <laughs> never came back wow um and he continues uh, to this day i've never heard the whispers they mentioned according to them it wasn't an often occurrence Uh, There were, however, three instances I did experience. The first time was about two years after we moved in. I was downstairs in the living room with my wife and we heard something between a crash and a thud that shook the entire home. It felt like the house had been hit by a truck. We stared at each other wondering what the hell had happened. I searched every room looking for furniture or something heavy that had tipped over or if a tree had fallen on the roof, but there was nothing. I have no idea what caused it and it happened twice more over the years. Uh, maybe one time it could have been melting ice falling off the main roof onto the porch. Um, but that first time was early summer. There was no ice. That's weird. That is very That's weird. That's like Ghostbusters stuff, isn't it? <laughs> that, he, that is exactly it, yeah. yeah it? No fault lines, no tectonic plates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the yeah. town is just shaking. Yeah, for some reason. It's, it's Goza. That's what it yeah, is. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, the strangest thing that happened was around six years ago, just before our daughter moved out. I had just gotten home from work and my wife came out to meet me as soon as I walked in the door. Where did you go? She asked. Go? I just got home from work, I told her. She looked a little frightened, then asked, you weren't here half hour ago. I shook my head. A half hour ago, I was leaving work. (laughs) Um, And this is what the wife told him had, uh, had happened. Basically, her mother was visiting and they were having coffee in the living room. They both heard the side door open and close, followed by footsteps that went up the stairs and a door slam. My mother-in-law made some comment like, what's up with him? He can't even come and say hi. To, which is a definite mother-in-law type comment. So <laughs> I, can, really I, I, I can even <laughs> hear it in my head. <laughs> uh, 10 minutes had passed and uh, my wife started to get worried. She went upstairs and checked the bathroom and our bedroom and there was no one there. Hearing that freaked me out and I too went upstairs and checked all the rooms myself. There was no sign of anyone. I almost thought it was a joke, but my wife was visibly shaken. It's a bit... (laughs) Um, Since then, it's been quiet for the most part. Once in a while, the dogs will act like someone just entered the room, barking and staring in the same direction. The cats will stop and glare at something only they can see. It's a little unnerving at times, but nothing sinister has ever happened. It could have been nothing at all, um, but then nothing doesn't shake a house. No. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, he's asked us what we think. So obviously, you know, I got in touch and thanked him for sort of reaching out. I did have a couple of questions, um, you know, sort of for him. So, you know, was there any noticeable change in things like the atmosphere or the temperature of the room, that kind of thing? And also, did the wife and daughter or the friend um, ever hear what the voices said mm. so was it anything kind of audible or you know could, could you know could you hear a conversation or you know were yeah. they trying to give a message that kind of thing um, and and thankfully um, he did respond um, so he's, he's confirmed they've, they've been there about 13 years with only a few of these occurrences so it's not like a regular a regular thing um, 
But to answer our questions, he said his wife said that the voices are like hearing a television on in another room. You can tell there's someone talking, but it's muffled and unintelligible. Um, it's always a man and a woman speaking, like the two are having a casual conversation. Um, he thinks his theory is that his daughter's friend may have understood what they were saying, which is why she was so quick to, you know, sort of up and leave. Yeah. Um, he, he has actually gone on to sort of correct his previous statement to say that he was wrong about when the daughter, uh, the daughter's friend had left. Mm. Um, she actually left in the middle of the night, oh, wow. according to his wife. Yeah, so she didn't wait until the morning. She, she must she, have heard it all going on and pretty what? much packed her stuff and and left. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> bye bye now um, sadly he can't ask the friend um, as uh, <laughs> she's really gone as, as she, she's gone baby um, <laughs> cut ties everything it's it yeah no she moved um, yeah she moved south apparently um, oh, years okay. ago and they fell out of touch um, he can't say that there was a noticeable change in the temperature during any of the happenings um, it's an old house with poor insulation mm. there's always a draft um, especially in the winter months the kitchen is in the back of the home, and it always seems cooler than the other rooms. Mm. There's been a few times while doing the dishes, he's gotten the feeling of a presence behind him. He'll turn around expecting to see someone there, but of course there isn't. Um, no, no, you and I have yeah. both had that feeling, oh, so I know times, exactly yeah. what that is. Um, at least nothing he can see. The animals, though, they react sometimes like mm. there's an intruder in the house. Um, and then, yeah, he just goes on to... Um, sign off on his on his email but that wow. that's that's basically his his story um well the thing is which with, is with the voices uh, and all that that sounds more like what you would consider like a residual haunting so there's residual yeah. energy from that time when it was inhabited um yes. like a yeah. certain point in time in which it was inhabited yeah and it's, so it's just, almost like a replay in yeah conversation of the last thing that happened maybe when they were in the house or exactly it's like um what they call the the, the stone tape theory right okay not to be confused with the stoned ape theory <laughs> <laughs> no that is different <laughs> that is very different it's very different so the stone tape theory is that um th there is energy and and technically data mm. that is stored within an area yeah with and then when that energy is released it, it plays that yeah that tape that recording yeah sort of thing so the voices that that if they're unintelligible, which I fully understand because yeah. I've, I've experienced that before. Mm. Like I've had like, like whispers and, and stuff yeah. like that. That's <laughs> yeah. sort of like um, a creepy paranormal film sort of thing. It's, yeah. it's a real thing that, yeah, yeah. that does actually happen. Yeah. Um, what what would be quite interesting is if they've ever experienced, say, like the Oz effect. So like the, almost the complete opposite of that in that yeah. The, there's like a, a, a bubble of silence and whatnot. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I suppose I was trying to get at when I asked him about this sort of the change in, in temperature and, and atmosphere. Mm. You know, did it go, you know, almost completely silent except for the whisperings and, and the other noises? Or, you know, was there something to kind of suggest that... Or they could localise where it was yeah. kind of coming from. Because my, my theory with that is that when when the Oz effect or you get those changes in, in atmosphere, that would... I, th I consider I consider that an active haunting, so yeah. it's like something that is sentient, that is there, and it knows. It's what there it and is. it's active, and it knows yeah. when people are in the house or when people are there, and it wants to make yeah. itself known Absolutely. the only way it can. Sort of kind of like um, the, that Nicole Kidman film, The Others. Yes. The yeah, yeah. There from way back, mm, you know, when yeah. uh, fantastic it's twist, great twist, yeah, brilliant yeah. twist. But it's like the the ghosts don't necessarily know that they're there but they're sentient and they're figuring yeah. out that there's there's things so wrong they're aware of themselves and that something's not quite right and they're, yeah. they're just kind of Whereas dealing with it how they best can sort absolutely, of thing absolutely which would be different from like the residual haunting where yes. it's just a a scene that's being played over and over and over that's kind of how i sort of interpret it is that they were they were kind of stuck on a loop almost in in a sort of particular conversation or a particular scenario that just plays you know like a I don't know, in, in certain films and stuff, they, they find like an old SOS message, mm. which is just played on loop for however yeah, long. That, that it's it's be, that kind of thing. It's, that's it's, exactly what that's kind of what energy it, would be. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's what activated kind of... at different times yeah. by something. Um, yeah. It's all phenomena. Other presence, we, time of the day. It's all phenomena or, that we can't d define exactly. No. You know, it's all open mm. at the moment. It's all open. So, But that's really yeah. interesting. That's That was really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So for, thank you for, to, for the listener to, uh, you know, for sharing that and letting us, uh, yeah, sort of share it with, with everyone else. It was, um, yeah, it's a really 
cool story with actual experiences and mm. you know and sort of evidence and yeah, yeah it was that's uh, cool yeah so got, yeah, you don't have to wait for a halloween special to send in your no stories. exactly get no. Them in, you know we're really like what this person it. did yeah just send them in you know whenever and we'll happily share them if uh if you're happy to allow us but uh mm. no i thought that was um yeah and no, i thought that was cool it was uh you know it was a, yeah. a, a haunting and yeah i think if it doesn't happen that often and they don't fi- feel that it's anything sinister and it's just a essentially a, a, a lodger in their their house and they sort of you know give each other their space then i guess you can leave it yeah. sort of well alone but uh, it definitely well, feels like it's a yeah as you say a residual haunting well when they start chucking things about that's when you get the priest in yeah exactly that's yeah what it is. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 when you start seeing your own <laughs> breath in your living room and uh yeah <laughs> the lights are flickering bruce and... willis turns up yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. if he turns up you're in trouble but uh but no, in all seriousness though you know thank you for um for sharing that and yeah, uh much appreciate it yeah hopefully we've done it justice and uh yeah hopefully everyone else enjoyed it because you know we certainly did and we, we sort of chewed over it a little bit uh mm. a couple of days ago didn't we in our initial yeah, yeah, chat yeah that just, was that uh, was good get our sort of you know get our thoughts cemented on that but yeah. uh yeah no, that was, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much so again. again. Yeah. So, uh, but, but straight on to the episode. So, Absolutely. Skinwalkers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, what have you found out about Skinwalkers, man? Well, it's. I, I don't know about you, but for me, it was one of those that was. Um, it was a bit of a slow burner. I I kept coming up against a lot of brick walls with it. So it's very very localized, it, isn't it? Very, yeah, very mm. localized and very sort of cherished almost you know it's part of a, a culture who you know take it very seriously mm. and are you know therefore reluctant to you know kind of share any personal experiences or you know kind of the ins and outs of, of kind of what they're brought up to believe you know the skinwalker is so initially i was just finding a lot of american uh, or you know hollywood sort of descriptions of of what it was or mm. um you know sightings or experiences you know with, with things like tiktok you know, the internet now is just flooded with people um, that yeah. feel like they've had an experience or an interaction or, you know, with, with Skinwalkers uh, specifically. Yeah, um, that, I've noticed that, actually, that there's been a real sort of push on the whole Skinwalker um, idea. Yeah. That, you know, there's... there's well, there's an, been a couple of films recently which I think might have got something to do with it because I think like it's just... the sort of thing to the Wendigo as well, isn't it? Well, really, exactly, that, yeah. That's really taken up on... on yeah, because you've got, um, you got that film Antlers... Um, yeah, which I've yet to see actually. Which, no, I've yeah, I've still not seen it, but uh, I will be will be watching it. But yeah, but that's about the the Wendigo, and then you've got um, a film. Um, I don't think it was a big budget film, but I've seen it on um, YouTube. It came out only last year, actually called Skinwalkers, and it's about an experience. Oh with, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I haven't seen it, but I know the. It might also the be on Amazon as well. I'm not yeah, too sure, is. but um, yeah. So it's just things like that. So I came up against you know a lot of brick walls where a lot of. You know, um, Native Americans, uh, you know, a lot of scientists, doctors, all from that sort of culture would sort of say, yeah, no, we know about it. And we you know we've got our stories, you know, this is what we was brought up on. But, you know, I'm not going to share it with anyone who isn't um, Native American because, you know, you, either you won't understand or it's, it's, you know, specific to us and our yeah. culture and almost like, a, you know, not all things have to be shared, you know, sort of thing. This is true. And they're quite happy to just keep it amongst themselves. Yeah. So that was what I... I seem to come up against, you know, quite a lot um, until the last couple of days, actually. And then I found a particular website that really did go into it um, in terms of, you know, kind of where it all started, um, you know, kind of how it started or or at least um, more traditional um, origins mm. and explanations for it. Whereas before it was just coming up with, yeah, sort of people on, like farmers on tiktok <laughs> saying they heard a skinwalker yeah. yeah i mean one was actually quite quite a cool video actually um and we can come on to that later on when, okay. we, do, when we do some of the um encounters and experiences and stuff um gotcha. sort of towards the i suppose the middle of the episode i guess but um yeah there's one that was quite cool but um but no i guess we'll jump into yeah, you know, yeah. kind of what i've found on the supposed origins of this famed skinwalker, um, yeah, which, as I'm sure everyone knows, um, is mostly centered around the uh, Navajo um, culture. Um, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. Um, 
and the, the term has never been used in anything positive. It's always been mm. in a negative light that Skinwalker or, you know, which obviously has typically been well, used yep. in um, a negative light. And which makes sense as well, because that, that they didn't <coughs> use the word shaman. Yeah, because that's more because when you read into it, that's more or less what these beings well, are. Yeah, well, I mean, kind the, of black but, magic, and but the shaman itself isn't necessarily a black magic thing. It's it's a, a it's a um, a vessel mm. for magic for nature yeah. and everything else. So it makes sense that they would say witch mm. rather than yeah. It seems quite specific with the terminology yeah, in, which in that is, respect. I mean, even to this day, witch still has a, a negative connotation when mm. really it 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 shouldn't it shouldn't do anymore. Not no, not any, not anymore. No, not since like, the 1800s when it, everyone was killed for being one. <laughs> yeah. like, since then, it's kind of everyone's got over it, I think. But that was the first thing straight off the bat that kind of surprised me is that they're actually seen as a, a kind of a witch or a, a sort of an evil entity, a negative spirit. And that's actually mm. kind of their their actual form. As mm. a, I just, you know, I just thought it was a, bi, you know, a bipedal coyote or something that was yeah. sort of possessed i thought it was more that's, um, animalistic that's, that's the that's image because, that you get from tiktok and all these other videos yeah, that are out there and all, all the, all the and films the and, yeah exactly exactly yeah. that yeah same thing was having with the wendigo wasn't it yeah 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 absolutely um navajo witches uh or skinwalkers um represent the opposite of the navajo culture and values um they have um, healers who are seen as medicine men and women um, or they use other sort of nurturing um, terms to describe them. Whereas the witches in that culture are seen as nothing but evil, um, performing twisted um, ceremonies and manipulating magic um, to almost deliberately go against the good work of the healers. So it's quite literally a good versus evil mm. um, sort of battle in, in this uh, in this culture, which I, th- which I thought was quite cool, actually. Um to battle this, the healers would learn both good and evil magic, so they knew what they were up against and how to counteract it, I guess. It's where the Jedi went wrong. Exactly, exactly. But the grey Jedi, the grey that's Jedi. where they got it right. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they got Luke it right. got it right. Luke got it right. Exactly. <laughs> um, the true legend of the... Um, Skinwalker isn't actually that well known outside of the Navajo. Uh, this was, goes back to what we were discussing just a minute ago. Um, this is mostly because they are reluctant to discuss it with outsiders. Um, it's all about trust and not wanting to disclose secrets to those who are non-Navajo. Yeah, like basically. you say, don't have to share everything. Yeah, they, are. they don't have to, and they don't feel any um, any need to. It, yeah, or just, any obligation or yeah, anything like that. It's it? just like well, yeah. this is ours you know you're not part of this culture why do you need to know um probably because they know like many things it will get dramatized or bastardized in hollywood and it will be a complete misrepresentation it'll, it'll commercialized yeah i mean it's funny actually I'll, um as i'm sure you are as well on facebook where i'm you know a part of a few sort of cryptid groups and yeah. and pages and stuff and I, not that i've you know known anyone by name or anything but i've i've noticed that there is a lot of actual native american members of these groups mm. who get quite passionate you know about it someone will just share a bit of artwork or you know of their um interpretation, their interpretation of yeah, a skinwalker yeah, it'll job. be like oh you know I, I heard this noise or i saw this in the woods i think it's a skinwalker what do you think blah 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 and a lot of them get quite passionate off the bat and just like no you know you don't know what you're talking about your idea of a skinwalker is is not it's what my culture wrong. believes and blah 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 and they sometimes they sort of lay out the law sometimes but most of the time they don't because of this reluctance to actually share you know the, the sort of the truth about it and yeah. I, so i found that to be quite um quite interesting actually um now we see you know speaking about coyotes um animals associated with um witchcraft are the ones usually um included in these uh you know sort of tales so anything that's uh, like a trickster or mm. um yeah any any sort of animal along those lines really so it'll be things like um you know coyote coyote wolf um and a snake uh, any uh, that, f- interesting that i didn't remember that coming up but it, it was basically anything that was linked to like death or bad omens okay so you'd expect maybe like spiders snakes well, that, well but, actually but that makes more sense like, because it's only the western cultures that actually have this association with snakes and there being a sense of evil mm. a lot of the old older cultures a snake would worship actually, them, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, it was a sim a symbol of um, of knowledge, yeah. uh, and wisdom. Mm. So it was. It makes sense. It was kind of 
a kind of a loaded question there, really, yeah, from my part. Yeah. <laughs> but that makes sense that snakes don't come up yeah. there as a trickster creature. Yeah, they didn't. It was more so, f- from what I can remember, it was mostly four-legged, mm. sort of woodland. So, you you know, coyotes. Um, uh, like foxes. But, and f- yeah, exactly. Yeah, foxes. Sort of yeah, sp- sp- especially for the trickster element. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously just like, you know, typical uh, wolves. Um the the witches may possess the body of either living animals, so any of any of those, um, or people. Um, and skinwalkers can be either male or female, which was interesting because if I know you'll remember, but a lot of the cryptids that we've gone through have almost always been seemingly male. Yeah, yeah, with the odd, you know, sort of female version or you know in, in yeah. interpretation. Um, yeah, but true. it's interesting that this, and he was quite specific about it as well. It was like men and women can be, you know, the skinwalker. It's yeah. not, you know, sort of exclusive to, well, you know, suppose, kind of one or the other. Yeah. I, suppose, I mean, the only one that really comes to mind is, is our first episode, Bigfoot with the Pat, Patterson yeah. Gimlin footage, which yeah. turns out to be, if it is true, if it is true, a, fe- a, female, a female, Bigfoot, a female species. Sasquatch. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It just, because it's yeah. one of those things that just, just doesn't pop up it, into you. No, certainly that I think would think of. Yeah. Um, now, basically, non-Navajo stories, mostly from Europe, detail the skinwalker wrong, as we've discussed. Mm. So the Navajo children would basically substitute this version of, you know, our version of a, a skinwalker with basically just a general. Uh, serial killer and the most popular one <laughs> was uh, a, a killer that they would create or have created called the hook and as soon as i go into the description you'll know <gasps> the hook the claw, the claw. <laughs> <laughs> basically the hook or hook man is a pirate like killer with a hook for a hand he's particularly portrayed as faceless silhouetted old man wearing a raincoat and a rain hat hmm now, the first thing that came to mind when I read that was, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Where he wears a, a rain yeah. hat, a raincoat, and he has a hook. Yeah, old Ben, isn't <laughs> not, it? Yeah, not necessarily for a hand, but he has a, a big old Great fishing old hook. meat hook, yeah. Um, yeah, and then, so basically, yeah, that, that's how much they don't like our version of a skinwalker. It's fair enough, That they've really. created their own crappy killer just to kind of <laughs> substitute <laughs> into our stories so they can yeah. scare each other and stuff. But even but even so, like that that's clearly been taken in, in pop culture oh, as, as a reference for serial killers in a lot of games and, and films. Yeah. Um it did list a whole bunch. Um obviously I know what you did last summer was was one that was mentioned. Jeepers Creepers is a similar sort of one as yeah. well. With the, yeah, well, the big no overcoat hand, and, the, no the, overcoat the, the, and hat the hat and the yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so again, they've created something to mock what our version is of, of their kind of cherished that actually thing. makes and then, sense. and then we've snatched that and bastardized it and put it in you know sort of horror films so it's almost <laughs> like we're proving them right yeah for for why they don't oh, why definitely. they don't tell us <laughs> yeah which is um yeah we, yeah yeah no, enough said about that i think yeah exactly <laughs> i don't want to go off on a tangent <laughs> yeah exactly yeah absolutely that, that'll be for another episode yeah definitely <laughs> um now this is going to be the uh, the first butchering of the uh, episode. Oh, excellent. So um, apologies in advance, but hopefully you'll appreciate the attempt, if nothing else. <laughs> Go for it. But um, in Navajo language, their word um, or or words for skinwalker is ye nadlushi, which translates to roughly by means of it, it goes on all fours. Oh, which, okay. Which fits into again what our interpretation of a skinwalker that makes is sense that it will be stand on its you know back so it's, legs it's, and also revert to you know all yeah. fours so um yeah um now in non-navajo culture mm. um it is widely believed to be a hoax um mostly because people believe uh, f- sort of find it hard to imagine that a humanoid figure can transfer into a, a four-legged animal um and that you know thus terrorizing families specifically in the um american southwest so if uh, unless you're navajo the general feeling mm. up until recently as you as you rightly said it's it's mostly been sort of a, a hoax 
oh, you know, a bit of hoodoo, a bit of, you know, just stories, gotcha. basically, to sort of scare you from going into the woods or... or to scare you to going into the Navajo land. Or to keep you off the reservations and that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, it's that's not the case within the Navajo culture. It's no, they very, very much, much believe, believe and, and, yeah, and... and and treasure it really um and and sort of cherish it's only from a lot of the things that that i've um that i've read um which is what i'll um sort of go into um now it's this is going to be a mix of kind of um there's gonna be a few stories but there's also going to be some kind of uh, kind of origins for the american part obviously not so much the navajo because that would have gone back you know much further but um certainly some kind of hopefully fairly traditional um, origins. Um, So in order to become a skinwalker within Native American belief, he or she must be, um, uh, must be sort of initiated by a secret society Mm. um, that requires the um, evilest of deeds. So, and some of the examples they gave were quite specific, but it, it was things like, you know, the killing of a close family member, um, which more often than not would be a sibling yeah. to that person. Um, after the task has been carried out, the individual then gains these supernatural powers. Which, um, which makes sense. That Well, that's, well I say it makes sense, but that's a concept that is stuck with magic mm, in general, that there right. being a huge cost to... Um, a power earning the right almost to get the right these to, powers yeah, yeah. absolutely it, that's the sort of stuff that Alistair Crowley would do yeah the, the, the beast <laughs> yeah. himself the most wicked man on earth yeah. as, as he called himself as he called himself yeah, yeah. he would do these um, quote unquote evil acts yeah in order to so it's kind of like um, to gain to gain power through sin basically through, yeah through ultimate sin and that, his journey was to find the ultimate sin in yeah. order to gain ultimate the, the power. Ultimate power or the highest of powers, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and that's very much what what, what th- this believes. Um, so these natu- uh, these supernatural powers would give them the ability to shapeshift into animals, as mm. we've discussed. Um, typically, they take the form of a wolf, coyote, uh, foxes, cougars, dogs, or bears. Um, they will then wear the skins of the animals they transform into, hence the name Skinwalker. Yep. Um, sometimes they would wear the skulls and antlers on their heads, um, which would supposedly bring them more power. Um, they are believed to choose the animal based on the ability they wish to adopt. So speed, strength, still for endurance, depending Mm. on what it is they wish to carry out, they would take the form of, of that you know animal so if you want strength then you'd you'd go for the bear yeah you know that kind of thing yeah and so that's and so that was one thing uh, amongst many others that i I didn't sort of know i just thought it was one particular animal you know sort of for the sake of it that parallels really mm. nicely with the norse berserker yeah that parallels really nicely with that because that's exactly what they used to do they i mean they used to um consult their their shaman or their goatee Mm. is is how is what they were called yeah and they would basically concoct a potion of magic mushrooms and they'd say right um drink this there's a bit of a process of distilling it but i won't go through that because it's a bit (laughs) but there's there's drink this um and wear the skin of the animal Mm. and you will adopt its power Mm. So, yeah, it would be a similar sort of thing. So if they wanted the actual full strength and durability, they'd wear a bear skin. Yeah. If they wanted speed, yeah. they'd wear a wolf skin yeah. or something exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah. So it's exactly the same sort yeah. of parallel to mm. that as well, so it, which yeah. is really interesting because those cultures are oceans yeah. apart. Oceans apart, yeah, absolutely. So, it's, again, it's these similarities that pop up in different cultures, seemingly mm. with no links on you know almost separate sides of you know the world. Yeah. Yet they've got these same. That must have come from somewhere. Yeah, it's come um, from somewhere, isn't it? But that'll be for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I've got one plan. Don't you? Worry. Oh, I bet you have. <laughs> um, basically, if a human was to lock eyes with the witch um, in, you know, whatever form, um, the witch would then be able to take the form of that person or possess them. Gotcha. So if if you it's if like you a walk them, sort of thing. Yeah, That's... kind of. Yeah. So if you lo- locked eyes long enough they would be able to take your form or if they chose to they would 
possess you and use you as a vessel to carry out their you know sort of evil doing gotcha. and stuff um now this is kind of a little bit of the I'm pretty sure this is the the part of the the sort of the law the the belief mm. um an evil society of witches would gather in dark caves or secluded areas for a number of different reasons um they would initiate new members plot activities harm people with magic you know from a distance or perform ceremonial rituals mm. um the witches would be said to <laughs> to carry out necrophilia oh. cannibalism incest and grave robberies um during these gatherings the skinwalkers or witches um would gather in either their animal form or completely naked <laughs> wearing nothing but beaded jewelry and ceremonial paint well it does all sound very sinful it it does it does <laughs> <laughs> and almost and, and also a friday night in basildon <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sounds sinful but it sounds like a fucking great time <laughs> yeah what a night yeah um so that's a, a sort of a belief of how they yeah they would congregate so it wouldn't just be one witch acting alone they would be a, a coven a coven basically yeah, yeah. um now this kind of i think this kind of ties in sort of you know the hatred with america um with the the navajo mm. um and, and why there is maybe the belief that there is um but in, in 1878 the navajo witch purge happened after a series of wars with the u.s military the navajo were expelled from their land and forced um down i think to new mexico mm. The people suffered when they got there, bad crops, harsh weathers, illness, and death. Uh, this went on for a four-year period until the American government realized that they'd made a mistake and basically let them return to their lands. Um, this, was a re- or this is a region in the States called the Four, the four Corners area. Mm. This cover- covers... Put my teeth in. This covers <laughs> <laughs> southwest Colorado... Southeast Utah, Northeast Arizona, and Northwest New Mexico. Um, once they returned, things started to, you know, kind of improve and return back to normal for them. But the tribe still blamed the skinwalkers for all the bad things that happened and believed that there were some among them. This led to the purge, which resulted in 40 Navajo being killed on suspicion of being a witch. Wow. Because that's what they blamed. Ver- all sounds very familiar, Very it? familiar, indeed. Um, and they, because they blamed the witches for the negative energy, the, the bad things that were happening to them, the harsh weather, the crops that were failing, people that were dying and yeah. getting illnesses. So, yeah, they basically, yeah. Wow. Lynched 40, 40 people within the, the Navajo tribe. And... Uh, Dispatched them. Killed them, yeah, for on suspicion of being a witch, yeah. Um so so yes, yeah, so that's what I kind of found um, you know, in, in respect of kind of the what I hope is the you know, the sort of the Navajo belief and, and the, the some of the, the kind of the origins to where these things, you know, sort of came from. And, and like mm. with a lot of these cryptids that we've looked into, there is a you know, a real world sort of origin mm. that's you know that's maybe been you know kind of tweaked or, or sort of twisted through you know throughout time but you know in essence these people existed these witches um you know existed within these tribes and were believed to have you know these these powers you know whether the transformation bit um you know is true but that certainly comes with mm. that and it certainly you know, the, sounds the two a lot things... more sounds a lot more paranormal than it does cryptozoological doesn't it? Yeah, I'd I was, say so. Yeah, because I was so. thinking it was more so mm. like that cryptozoological in that it was a, a, a creature. Yes, that exactly. Almost yeah. more like um, like a werewolf sort of thing. That's yeah. the, that's the sort of image that I had in my head. Yeah, with regard like someone was cursed with being a skinwalker, not that it was a an ability that someone could possess. Yeah, exactly. Through through magic and through uh, paranormal and super supernatural means. Yeah, such. So that, that, for me, that was what was quite surprising about. 
learning about what what a skinwalker was yeah because I, I thought exactly the same it was more cryptozoology in the sense that we're dealing with a creature mm. and it, it sort of had its origins deep rooted in this culture and and it was kind of a case of trying to unearth what that origin was but yeah as you say it's um it's got this uh more sort of paranormal um sort of origin that, I, that i've certainly picked up on yeah. you know sort of from this um which which also brought up like with the wendigo it actually brought up a, a condition linked okay. to this gotcha um i think the actual condition in the negative sense i think was penciled as delusional lycanthropy or lycanthropy oh lycanthropy yes yeah okay where basically these yeah. people believed that they could turn into a wolves wolf. mm. and they would do so and they would hunt their prey i.e other sort of humans the same way a wolf would yeah so they'd hide in the in the bush or in the long grass they you know they'd sort of creep up behind them you know wow. catch them and then maul them you know in in the same way and there were you know there were not too many kind of known cases but there have been people diagnosed with yeah lycanthropy um but when they because there, there was a, a serial killer in the states and i think that's where the delusional lycanthropy came from because there were some people that would just have the, the you know the mental illness and they would just believe that they could turn into a wolf and the, would maybe walk around on all fours and yeah you know, and that kind gotcha. of thing but then the delusional lycanthropy came in from the fact there was actually a serial killer in the states who would actually prey and maul his his victims because he truly believed that he at certain point turned, turned into, into a, wolf. a wolf yeah but basically he was just carrying out cannibalism basically <laughs> for the most part and murder i guess <laughs> You know, sort of for the most part. So again, like with the Wendigo, there's actually it a... been in the 60s by any chance, was it? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I don't think I got a date on the, the, yeah. the articles that I found. Yeah, but when yeah, the CIA were surprised. dropping LSD in the water and yeah. all that sort of The bollocks. 50s and 60s, yeah, yeah, would probably be the uh, the height of it. But um, yeah, but I thought it was Eyes interesting. You CIA. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was like with... Um, you know the Wendigo, they had the uh, actual a, know, a medical condition, medical condition that this has also, you know, got one as well. So are we dealing with you know a genuine medical condition and uh, you know uh, a Native American, you know, culture or, mm. or law, and somehow the two have been, you know, sort of mixed together, probably by America to create what we as you know kind of Westerners know as the Skinwalker, and, and is that where it's all? You know, That's sort of come from. So yeah, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting as well. That this has also got a real world link yeah. with this whole men um, mental illness, I guess. Yeah. Well, I suppose this is the thing as well. Like to go on the, the mental illness. I think I said this before about when we did the the uh, Wendigo thing. Is that ancient cultures saw ideas of, of mental illness a way mm. that you could heal spiritually or yeah. through a paranormal re uh, uh, paranormal means mm. and rather than it being just take these drugs it's a chemical imbalance or, or something yeah. like that that you know that your wiring's off or something mm -hmm. you know they, yeah, they would actually yeah. use ceremonies and rituals in order to heal people of these to sort of bless it out of you or yeah, draw exactly. it out of you or you know that kind of thing so yeah it, completely so... different understanding of, of mental health and oh and yeah everything. absolutely yeah but it, to, to a certain degree there's a certain amount of people that do find um, healing in spirituality yeah, so is exactly. there something to be said about that? Is there that? something in it? Yeah. Were they practicing it for a reason? You know, because they would have been more in tune with the earth and, mm. you know, Seeing all these other... have all of these various different opioid issues and, yeah. you know, the, the, I mean, America's going through an opioid issue, like, unreal. Mm. And it's all prescribed medication. It is, yeah. It's not That's like... the worst thing, yeah. It's not like people growing poppy seeds and, yeah. and you know, They're getting prescribed up. it. Yeah. They're getting prescribed it and it's stronger than the stuff that they find illegally. This is the, this is the disgusting thing yeah. about it. Yeah. You know, so maybe there's something to be said about. Well, arrest you if you've got weed, because that's because that's you know illegal in some states. But yeah. here, here's this prescription for stuff that sends you off your bollocks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And ultimately yeah. kills you. Yeah, has, has, but side, has side effects that. such as you know suicidal tendencies yeah. and homicidal activity. But this is prescribed, so that's fine. But the other stuff that you're growing yourself now, you can't yeah. you can't smoke that. No, yeah, something to be it's said natural. About, something to be said about <laughs> lobbying. Right? Yeah, yeah, just a uh, just a touch, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I suppose before we pass over onto your bit, um, I, as I said earlier, I had a, I found a couple of um, sort of stories, probably some of the, the better ones that I found. Um, I'll start with the, the quickest one, I guess. 
and it was based off a video um, that I saw. Um, it was linked on a, a website, but I think it was uh, on someone's TikTok gotcha. account. And he was on horseback going through um, what presumably is his, you know, sort of reservation. And he, the, the sort of the caption on the video said, if I ever heard it again, I said I'd film it. And that was it. And he's, he's on horseback. All you see is like the back of the horse's head. Gotcha, and they're, they're, yeah. they're walking up a, a trail, um, you know, sort of pastures or, or just sort of fields either side, completely like remote. And he, you know, they're, they're sort of trotting up this path and you can see the horse starts to spook and it's sort of head, he's sort of moving towards the left. Um, and then it, it comes to a stop. The guy pans the camera around because he can obviously sort of hear something. So he's panning it around to see if he can sort of pick it up. And then quite distinctly, um, coming over what sounded like from the left-hand side, Yeah. Um, you just hear this, hey, hey, like that. It sounds like a young woman or a girl. Yeah. And he's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> gave me chills then. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was in the middle of nowhere. Like, and you can see, like, the trail for, like, a mile ahead of him. You can see all the land. It's, it's a disembodied open. voice, again, out in the yeah. wilderness. And the belief is that they can take on... They, they they take on the voice of someone that either you know or would recognise... Much like the Wendigo. ...to trick you yeah. into going out into, you know, the woods or the, the grass, wherever it may be, the bush, to then basically possess you wow. or... Yeah. Take your skin. Take your skin, basically, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was complete, and it didn't sound like it had been. I mean, I you know obviously I'm not an audio expert, but to yeah, me, it yeah. didn't sound like it had been dropped into the video, like superimposed as a separate, sort yeah, of. as a separate audio yeah. or whatever. It because it, it, it carried with it the sort of the you know the sort of the echo, you know, coming through this sort of valley, mm. you know, sort of type thing. Um, and instantly, as soon as you hear it, the guy doesn't, doesn't even have a chance to do anything because you see the horse just go. Thump. <laughs> it just turns like to yeah, the yep, right I'm off. and goes down a path in completely the opposite um, Trust direction. Trust the animal, man. Trust which, the animal. Yeah, because yeah, you see its ears sort of doing that thing where location. It sort of yeah, yeah. it sort of moves on its side of its head to sort of try and locate the uh, the noise, whatever it is it can hear. But at this point, I think it's just like a rustling or or something. But then it stops, and then you hear the the voice. And I'm pretty cool. sure it says I'm pretty sure it says it twice. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I think he, and and then further in the article, I think he he says that it happened again, but he wasn't able to record it. Um, but uh, or did he? Because there was another video where it was at night, and he was walking down the same trail, but it was on the opposite side of the the trail this time. Like, hey, right. and th but yeah, but and, and it was the same thing. It was like hey. Hey, but this time it sounded younger. Like it was taken on a younger voice. Like it sounded like a, a more like a, I suppose like a young boy or something. Yeah. He's like, hey, 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 and obviously it's pitch black aside from the light from his phone. Send, you know, send me that later on, man, because I'd like to. I'd I'll like send to you the link. That. Yeah, I'll send you the uh, the link. But yeah, I watched both of those and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> imagine you're in that. And he's like, and I mean, obviously there's a, he's out there, so there's a chance there could be someone else, but. I don't know. You don't see anything, or and it, it, if it's the it same sounds spot like as a, well, it sounds like a voice, and you can you can hear what it's trying to say, but it doesn't sound like it's a human saying it. If that makes I, sense, I, no, do you know I, what I mean? Like I know it's, exactly what you it's mean. It's a vocalization yeah. of a word, but mm. it doesn't sound like it's coming from. It's like when you hear a parrot mimic. That sort yeah, of thing. yeah. Like it has there's yeah. something not something quite, quite the same, not right with it. Yeah. yeah, it was that it was that kind of thing, and yeah, and he, he videos it twice, but yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll send you that link when um, yeah, man, that like when cool. I get back. But um, yeah, a couple of others um, that happened in and around this uh, uh, what was it Four Corners area um, of the states. Um, it's basically, it's a story of a man who was carrying out repairs on his ranch, um, and he begins to hear a loud laughing coming from a nearby sheep pen. Fuck that! Yeah. <laughs> that would have been the odd about it. nope <laughs> uh, he went to the uh, he, he went there to investigate and saw all but one of the sheep huddled in one corner however there was this one lone ram um, that was standing upright and laughing in a very human manner <laughs> drop me out nope drop me <laughs> bye out. bye now um, locking eyes with the creature he notices that it has human eyes 
So it's like he's looking wow. back at a pair of human eyes. He's not looking at what you'd expect a sheep's eyes well, no, to kind of they're, they're very look distinct, at. yeah, didn't they? Um, and at this point, it drops, it drops down on all fours and just walks off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the fire. I'll be, yeah, kill it. I'll be kill it the with rifle. fire. Jesus get, Christ! I'll be getting the rifle out. That's for sure. Um, My lord. Yeah, exactly. Um, now this one, this one gave me the creeps, and this one would just be like, "Yeah, nope." <laughs> Moving out the following day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the following day. Um, in the nineteen eighties, a family um, were driving through a Navajo reservation. As they took a corner down the, this trail, um, slowing down to sort of take it, um, something jumped out at them from a ditch at the side of the road. They described the figure as black, hairy, um, and it was wearing um, pants and a shirt. So trousers or, okay. or jeans yep. and a, and a shirt. Um, a few days after the incident at their home in Flagstaff, Arizona, the family were awoken by the sounds of loud drumming and chanting. Outside their home were three dark figures believed to be men standing in a like in a row. Um now, for some reason, they, although they looked like men, they were sort of dark figures, almost like almost like a, a black shadow figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because they couldn't climb the fence to gain access onto the property. So after a while of chanting and, and sort of drumming, they basically just left. So whether they were doing that as, as like, like on the approach... intimidation or something like as that. Intimidation, yeah, but also on the approach to the property, realising that they could only get so far, they sort of gave up and and sort of left. Um, but that was, yeah, that was a couple of days after they were on this Navajo <laughs> reservation and there's suddenly there's three, three dark figures chanting and banging drums outside their house. And then... Well, yeah, that's... So whether it was a warning from the actual Navajo to not drive on their reservation again. That's a possibility. Or whether it was an actual, well, it was something else, some well, other than, entity. Well, it was a little bit less invasive than, you know, putting a tomahawk in the front door. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. A, that's a definite yeah. message. That's yeah. like, stay the fuck out. Yeah. But, yeah, that's... Um, but that's just creepy, mm. I think, more than more than anything. So I thought that was quite cool. Um, now, the, ne- the next one, which uh, will be my last, <laughs> um, <laughs> to segue into uh, our next uh, section. Um, I wanted to just um, introduce briefly another encounter. Okay, for it. Around 18 months after moving into their ranch, a family had quite a distressing... Distressing. Put the teeth in. Distressing, shall right, Sean Connery. Distressing <laughs> experience or encounter. Terry Sherman was walking the family dogs around the, their ranch late at night when he encountered a wolf. It was three times larger than a normal one would be, um, with glowing red eyes. And it stood there unfazed as uh, Terry put three shots into its hide. It ran away seemingly unhurt, um, but this wouldn't be the first time that they would, the Sherman family would have an encounter um, you know, with this creature, which would uh, take place on the infamous Sherman Ranch. Which, as we know. as we will find out, or as we do know, changed its name. <laughs> yeah, changed its name to Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch. Ranch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, th- that is a story that's clearly come up many times. Um, what was really yes. interesting about that is um, they put several shots into it. Yeah, and it it didn't do anything. I think it, in the the story that I read, it only mentions three, but then in the documentary that we watched, I think they actually mentioned five. Yeah, you put three in its side and two in its head, or well, something. They went, gave them gave them time to go into the house, into the homestead, yeah. because what it was trying to do was trying to get the calf out of the pen. Yeah, and it was trying to drag it through the through the fence, mm. and so they gave them time to go into the house, reload get the a gun. bigger gun, <laughs> come out and give it a couple more shots. Then yeah. It, it, didn't do anything and then he just didn't let go of the calf it. and run off and run off yeah like, so i think it was five shots in total but yeah from the the, the version of the story that i found anyway they, yeah. they only mentioned uh three in its in its hide well, well it turns out so, that the, the shermans actually owned the the ranch for two years they did well, yeah which if they did. after you've seen something like that you're going to put it up for sale 
Was that well? The, the first encounter was eighteen months after buying it, so yeah. it wouldn't have been much longer after that. They would have sold it and if that and really, left. If, yeah, a couple you know, of months maybe. Well, yeah, I mean they, like they bought it in ninety four, yeah, and sold it in ninety six to Robert Bigelow of uh, yeah. Bigelow Aerospace, yeah. Um, and I remember at the end of the last episode when um, I said that uh, you know I'm pretty sure that the government own it. I was a little yeah. bit confused with that because yeah. the government didn't own it, but the government had a real big stake in. Robert Bigelow's research. Yeah, um, I think they. I, I think, think it was it, funded. His research was maybe funded, or he was given equipment by them to it, sort of carry out well, certain investigations. We know of at least one funding of twenty-two million dollars. Yeah, that went into it, and that That's was right. that was in ninety-six. Yeah. Um. So I don't know whether or not the purchase itself was, um, uh, instigated by yeah. the government. Yeah. Because you know they do like to the American government do like to go around the houses in order to acquire something as we've <laughs> yeah. recently found out in the we past have. two years yeah um you know so it's it makes perfect sense that robert bigelow then put all of this research and development into it um and he owned it up until 2016 so he owned it for like right okay 20 quite years recently then yeah yeah and that's um to 2016 is when brandon fugel um, of adamantium holdings. Yeah, I love that name. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? adamantium. Anyone that does know what adamantium is, you yeah. know why we find that yeah, great. Absolutely. Um, but he he bought it for four point five million dollars. Oh. Robert Bigelow reportedly bought it for two hundred thousand. Wow. Bigelow. You've did definitely all... bought into the hype there, haven't Bigelow you? Bigelow did all right. He did it? all right, didn't he? Well, now, yeah. the thing is, right, the, um, the, the critics of Skinwalker Ranch say that. Um, the majority of the stories arose up when the Shermans had it. So the the idea is that the Shermans um, distributed all these various different stories in order to for the drive ranch the to, price up exactly so, so they could sell it. It's that right. idea of, of of even like um, cars and objects. They if they have history, they're worth yeah. more. Yeah, you know, I've, I've watched um, the uh, various different American shows like porn, a pawnbroker show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is a sword. Okay. It was owned by so and so. Ah, oh, there you go. Now yeah. it's worth ching, ching. Yeah. You know, like, it's that sort yeah. of thing. So a story adds value. Yeah. Um. And the the Skinwalker Ranch is is named as such because it you know it involves mm. the Navajo. Yeah. And it involves um a time when, um the American government were really taking taking charge of the lands and whatnot. Yeah. And it is exactly what you I think it was in eighteen eighty seven is the 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 date that you gave when. They uh, seventy eight kicked out. I think it was seventy eight. Seventy eight, yeah, eighteen seventy eight. Eighteen seventy eight, um, and uh, the there was a curse put on the land, um, and it was because the Ute tribe, ha- who had aligned themselves with the American yeah. government, had actually started utilizing the Navajo, Navajo, <laughs> as um, as slaves. So they, oh wow, yeah, okay. they were they were basically taking them and selling them off as slaves. But prior to that, um, oh, right. they'd always had a. a a good understanding you know yeah. with this is land that you know we these are our borders this is ours that's yours and the, the various native tribes would always war with each other they'd always mm. carry out you know cruel acts against each other mm. um but they seem to have it's a it's humankind though isn't it so it's nothing exactly, out of the ordinary yeah, yeah nothing new with that really yeah. but they it was at this point in time when that's when the the, the curse went on mm. and that's when strange things started happening i mean there was always well start, strange things started getting reported at the very least right because before that there was always stories about this land about there always being strange lights in the sky and mm. um various other strange phenomena large creatures wolves in particular yep. um which obviously the, the natives always attributed to being a skinwalker yeah but um yeah so the the, the modern reports they they started from like the early 1900s Right. Um, but it really only came into fame in like the mid two thousands, when um, right. George Knapp co-authored oh. a book um, that described the ranch uh, in being acquired by the National Institute of Discovery Science or NIDS. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which was um, basically when Big Robert Bigelow owned it, so NIDS was involved, and that is a obviously a, a government body. Yeah. It's another one of those. Acronyms <laughs> that the Americans love. Do you love them? Not, yeah, do th- love them not a three-letter a- acronym, but um, yeah. it's uh, it's an acronym non- nonetheless. So th- th- the study was um, put in place because there was loads of reports of UFO sightings, big Bigfoot-like creatures, crop circles, right? 
glowing red eyes, um, glowing orbs, and poltergeist activities. Right, okay. So this was the really strange thing. So it's not yeah. just the idea of it just being UFOs. This was like the first time that people really started noticing that there was these similarities between UFO activity and paranormal yeah. activity. You know, Yeah, and, exactly, yeah. You know, so this was the time when really things started kicking off on that respect. But to get into the actual um, documentary that I watched, it was quite <laughs> interesting, really. Yeah, he's, it, he's good. Because when I first started watching it, I thought, this all looks a bit too staged. Like, yeah, every, I know what you mean. You I've, know, I've watched that, it since, and it, it's... It does seem, you know, scripted. It's like the, you know, the reality TV that we get over here. Yeah. You know, reality in, uh, in, in quotation, in, in quotation marks, yeah. marks. Yeah, because it's, it's reality, but it's completely forced and, you know, scripted and, and situations are set up and yeah. conversations are set up deliberately well, for when they have the like cameras. The, the, the so. quote unquote interview part where mm. they talk about what is happening at that point. And it's, yeah. it, is all, it all sounds a bit Dog the Bounty Hunter. Is yeah. the way I is yeah, the way yeah. I put it before. Yeah, maybe and saying, it's just yeah. like yeah, this all doesn't sound great at the moment. But and you've already and straight off the bat because normally I find with these things with documentaries, you know, you you, find, you need a couple of episodes to kind of get into it to kind of be like right, this person's that type of character, and I mm. say oh, so he's going to be that type of person, yeah, and oh, he's going to be the one to cause the trouble, it's been and, cast. and all that. Yeah, this yeah. this one is seems like it's been deliberately set up to have those people str like straight off the bat. Yeah. But like, it's one of those things that, like, if you stick with it, if you persist with yeah. it, you realise that it's so much more than just a dramatisation or that it's scripted in any way, shape, or form. I mean, what I, did, I think like, it was just the first couple of episodes. Maybe they were just trying to get into it, most find their definitely feet. Definitely the first one because and get I like used to being on camera as well. That as well. That, that I think is the, the main. That is something actually. The main thing. Yeah, because I mean, what I did like, I did like um, Brandon Fugel's uh, flex. Right at the very beginning, we get some all sat <laughs> with the in helicopter or... with, with, the, with the Lamborghini, yeah, and then the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. we, he didn't need to be helicoptered into no, the ranch. Yeah, absolutely not, he? absolutely not. But, but I liked it. I, I liked the fact flex, that it was, a, yeah. it was a huge flex on his part. But not only that, what impressed me was the little um, platform that the helicopter was yeah. on, the little remote control platform <laughs> that just kind of brought it out of the hangar and then just sat there. Yeah, and it was like that, that, that was cool. Yeah, and they pulled into the hangar. In a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Exactly, it. yeah. But yeah, so to just give you guys a... I'm going to go through not everything on the documentary because I think it's... Yeah. And I'm not going to give the ending away either. No. Because I will say the ending is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Like It's mind-boggling exactly what it is that they find. But I will go through... The various experiments yeah. that they that they did and the findings that they had. Well, and we also want you know you guys to go out and you know sort of watch it yourselves oh, if absolutely. you find it something you're interested in. You know, instead of us regurgitating the source material, you know, we'll give some of the mm. the kind of the highlights if you like, and yeah. you know, you guys go and check it out. It's on uh, it's on Amazon at the moment. It is Curse of Skinwalker Ranch. Yep, isn't it that we're referring that's it. to Curse of Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah. There's a uh, season two that's just recently come out as well. Yeah, it has, so yeah. Um, which I haven't seen yet. No, I've not. Um, but it'll be worth. I'm definitely going to yeah. continue with it because, yeah. like I said, I was a bit dubious at first, like I said, <laughs> but now I'm hooked on it because it's like what they're finding is real phenomena, and they're getting yeah. they're gaining evidence as well. This yeah. is the strange thing about it. What got me though was that they were withholding a lot of information from the main guy whose name Taylor something isn't Travis, it Travis Travis Taylor Travis Taylor they you know they were they brought him in specifically to do a job but then they weren't necessarily willing to let him do said job and they were withholding a lot of like information yeah. there's there's a couple of really awkward conversations that I just loved watching <laughs> yeah I know right and uh, he's sitting there and he's like you know well I want to do this yeah well you know you can't. Why can't I? This is what we're here, here to do. You just can't. Like things have happened. Like you just can't do. There's it. a real big okay. superstition around the ranch, and that that is really what drives the reason yeah, why they can't do certain things. For me, and... it kind of felt like they didn't like the fact that this guy had been brought in, and for me, it was it felt like a bit of a dick swinging contest. It did, yeah. Like especially with Dragon. <laughs> I was gonna get to him. I was gonna get to him. I was gonna say like what the, yeah. what the team was and yeah, everything. Especially. And like with with him, it, it yeah, it just felt like he was trying to kind of lay down the law and be like, no, I I run the show. Yeah, if I don't want it happening, it's not happening. Yeah. Unless you know, unless well, Mr. Fugel signs off on well, it. So he's like, so you pipe down, son. Like it yeah. felt a bit. It did like, feel a bit like, bit like that. Of a, uh, yeah, flex of muscles. Yeah, to weird flex going. Find on. the um, 
find the hierarchy in the uh, in the Definitely. group. But it made for great watching. Oh, absolutely! It's awkward as anything. It was really awkward. <laughs> really, really awkward. And that's that's exactly it. So we've got Eric Bard, who's like the principal investigator on on, yes. on the team. He's the one that really kind of he he's he he's sort of like the glue, really. Yeah. That that brings all these various different elements together, and he's the yeah. one that just he like, sort of he, guides it. And, well, we built his own yeah. control room and everything, which yeah. looked plush. It did look nice. It looked really yeah. plush. He had some proper real. Like, um, tools in there for this investigation so they've got like, uh, like infrared cameras on there infrasound sensors um, avionics receiver so they're able mm. to see flight paths in real time yeah what's happening above in the sky so they can identify not. what's a plane like what's commercial aircraft yeah, what's exactly. private what's aircraft what's supposed to be there what's not supposed to be yeah, there yeah exactly they've got electromagnetic sensors Geiger counters microwave detectors and they've also they've got animals on the ranch of course with yeah. uh, animal ESP yeah, extra exactly, sensory yeah. perception. So, there's always been this this age old theory that animals can detect things that we can't anymore because yeah. we can only experience such a, so a much, narrow yeah. spectrum mm. of of what the universe has to offer. But um, he's basically living a nerd's dream, isn't he? He's been given the, like the he's been given like the dream job to just go ghost hunting and shit all day, every day. And he's been In given the middle a, of Utah, middle of Utah, yeah. on a, on an infamous you know sort of plot of land mm. with seemingly a, a blank check pretty much <laughs> pretty much <laughs> because yeah. the control, i can't remember what he called it but you yeah, know basically the control room that yeah. he, he shows the the new guy and you the look hub. at him you just think whoa yeah he's, do, he's <laughs> doing all right isn't he? yeah yeah so um as, as you said they brought in a gentleman called travis taylor who's an astrophysicist out of alabama mm. um and he seems to know his shit yeah, he's got government clearance as well, so yeah. he's been involved with a lot of various different investigations and and um, work involving the government. Yeah. Um, then you've also got the the people that are usually there on site as well. So you've got uh, Thomas Winterton, who's the ranch superintendent, Jim Morse, Jim Morse. Was Jim Marsh. Uh, was Jim Marsh, boy. I was about to say Jim Morris. He's <laughs> yeah. like Jim Marsh, boy. His name Jim Marsh. Uh, he's the ranch um, manager. We've got. Uh, Jim Segala, who's a scientist that they also yep. bring in. But then we've also got Bron Arnold, <laughs> Bryant Arnold, who's head of security and also known as Dragon. Has to be addressed as Dragon. Dragon. What a guy. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> what it what the meeting was between Arnold and Fugel? The, yeah. You have to call me Dragon. You have to call me Dragon, though. Yeah. yeah. You have to call me Nighthawk. <laughs> <laughs> they are stepbrothers, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was like that just made it did make me laugh. Yeah, yeah um, I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah code name Dragon. Code name Dragon walks around yeah. with either an AR fifteen or a shotgun everywhere. Yeah. Which you, what about the, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he brought his associate with him. He was like uh, Caleb. That yeah. was it. Built like a brick shit house, huge, <laughs> with about a, what looked like a, a, a six foot shotgun. <laughs> this thing was an absolute. It was like an anti aircraft gun. This bloody thing, and he's it, just standing there like proper flexing, holding this like gun that could just put down a plane within in like one shot. I reckon that gun could take out the paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> it could. Yeah, yeah, it could. Yeah, but it, it's it's what yeah. Getting into the actual. Um, the documentary itself, it it kicks right off as well. Oh, it throws you straight into it. Yeah, yeah. it's not a slow burner at all. You're, no. you're dropped straight into it. Once the, the uh, pleasantries and the introductions are out of the way, yeah, it's then wallop straight like, into yeah. it. And it, <laughs> yeah. the, the and there's a superstition with regards to the ranch in that the ranch actually it reacts to to new people, to new yeah. elements as well. That, that things happen when. Mm things are introduced to yeah. that space mm. um so th one of the first things that they do is after they've been briefed on the various different activity that has been experienced on the ranch so um there's various different lights in the sky um that have been caught on uh, infrared cameras and such there's also a really really interesting part with the the, the skinwalker ridge so the, yes the, the, yeah, the yeah. slight mountain Part Mountainous to, region, yeah. To the bowl that is, yeah. Uh, you know, Skinwalker Ranch. It's glowing. Mm. It glows in infrared light, which is like it's, it's just rock. Meant, it's meant to be a mound of dirt and rock. It's not supposed to glow or it's just, reflect or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then there's also um, light being emitted from behind mm. the the rock, um, and light beams heading yeah. from the ground up into the sky, like straight beams. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, the, Travis, he, he kind of ask the question well is there like a used car lot behind there that's you know with the searchlights and everything yeah like we get on the south yeah. seafront with the uh 
uh, with the nightclubs and the, yeah, the sea exactly. the um the the theme park thing yeah the, the sea got. life advent, it, adventure adventure yeah, yeah. and all of that sort of stuff yeah is it entertainment yeah like, yeah yeah but they're like nope there's nothing behind it for yeah. miles so where this glow and well this, he flies over it as well doesn't he that you know, as it's, well. it's just nothing. dead land there's nothing there yeah yeah so well seeming there's like it's it's like a well it's what you'd expect from the middle of America that desert. Yeah, you know, yeah. Very so that's, little... that's what I mean by dead land, just like mud and sand and yeah, yeah, tumbleweeds and hardly yeah. anything at all. So yeah, that was kind of like the the, the place where Travis wanted to go first off, like because mm. he'd heard about all these different reports that involved the ridge or the mesa, as they they call it. Yeah. Um. So they head up there and using a trifield meter. Now a trifield meter is um it measures the electromagnetic electromagnetic field yep. static electric field and radio microwave field so they're able right. to see little peaks and troughs in the various mm. different wavelengths that are being emitted in a certain area and it's also directional as well so right, they can okay. find out exactly where it's coming from nice um, and at this point it shows incredibly high levels of energy being emitted from the ridge itself nice. huge amounts okay. so the, the waves are popping all over the place and everything yeah along with that they start having various different electrical issues. So at different points in the ranch, but mostly around the ridge and where um, a location that is known as Homestead 2, which is, it's not inhabited anymore, but it's mm. it's um, it's a homestead that was built in, I believe they said it was like 1910. Right. Um, and it's just remained derelict. Is there. that the, the derelict part with all the little outbuildings and That's the little it. huts? and Yeah, it's been yeah, abandoned yeah, okay. since, the, since the 30s, they yeah, were saying. Yeah. So nearly a, nearly a hundred years. Yeah, some shit goes in, down there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, some shit does go down there. So, th- what was really what I did find quite interesting, and, w- and what made me go, "Oh, this is the real deal," was that they attempted to replicate the conditions of these various different electrical malfunctions. Mm. So, um, what Eric Bard did was he he, he took a still from um, a video that he was doing, and it showed disruption in the digital data. Right. So, in order to replicate that, what he did was he actually get a, he got a, what does he call it? Um, a neodymium magnet. Right. So, this is an incredibly strong magnet that is constantly emitting electromagnet- electromagnetic waves. Mm. And they were able to replicate the same disruption on a, a mobile phone that they were experiencing out in the field. Right. So, okay. right from the get go, they're like, yeah, we know this is some sort of electromagnetic interference, interference yeah. that is happening with the mobile phones at the very least. Right. And that's something that progresses right the way through the entire summer that they're investigating. That yeah. There are various different points. The mobile phones start wigging out. Mm. Like they're just, it's, like, it's like something's in it tapping away. Yeah. Like it's trying to access um, contacts and then it's going on the dial screen. It's, it's just tapping the dials and everything. Yeah. It's just... Something really, really weird really is bizarre. happening there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the team then decide that they want to do like a, a radiation sweep. So if there's all this, what they call dangerous levels of microwave being detected, yeah, then what they need to do is they need to do a radiation sweep to make sure that there is no radioactive material because the ranch itself is so incredibly close. It's only a couple of hundred miles away from the Nevada test sites where they were setting off above ground nuclear bombs yeah and you know with the nuclear fallout was basically because they had they didn't realize what they were doing Mm. you know forgive them for they know not what they do yeah you know all this nuclear fallout all the dust and everything was being kicked up into the air but the current was taking it and it was landing pretty much on Mm. skinwalker ranch or the um the utinar Mm. uinitar uinitar that's it the uinitar basin yeah um which is where the the ranch is located um, and what they found was when they was, they found uh, a sinkhole and they went into it to try and find some sort of. Basically, they're just investigating it. So they got these trifield meters and it's and it's spiking. It's mm. going up and down. It's all over the place. And then Travis starts feeling nauseous. Starts experiencing vertigo. Yeah, he's like, "This is a bit odd." And then he goes, "Hang on a second, my phone has just completely died. The battery is just depleted." And one of the other guys that's there said, yeah, mine has as well. Which is something that coincides really, really heavily with um, paranormal activity. We see it on all the various different yeah. ghost shows that we yeah. watch that 
you know, they, they drains the energy from the closest whatever it is. Source. Yeah, yeah. Like some people like their camera batteries, which are just fresh out of the charger. Yeah. Suddenly depleted within no time at all. Yeah. Um, and what what was quite odd about this particular sinkhole, which was located on the ridge, was it had an airflow coming out of the sinkhole. Right. Okay. So that's like or anyone sort of yeah. like tweaking. Oh, Where's okay, it leading? Well, we've got yeah. to dig then, haven't we? We've got to get in there and we've got to dig. And that's when... No, no, no. no. <laughs> Dragon puts his foot down. Nope. He's like, no. <laughs> no digging. No, it's not happening. No digging. That's yeah. not happening at all. And we've, to be honest, we've, with the amount of superstition that there is on that ground, you can understand why because um, Tom Winterton, mm. he actually suffered quite a horrific injury yeah. because he started digging. Yeah, he was told not to. They were warned against it, weren't they? But he, at the time, he he didn't believe in any of it and thought it was no. just just that, just superstition. It's fine. But someone said if you disturb the land, you will pay for it. Yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, and that could tie in with the curse that was supposedly put on it. Absolutely. By the you know by the Navajo, it could all be part of that. But yeah, he, he was quite a horrific. Um, like his brain swelled, didn't it? Or his, it was, his, it was, his head swelled. It was certainly the um, the skin mm. and the the epidermis at the very least mm. on the back of his head mm. that. Um, it, 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 it was up between his skull and up. his skin. It sort of inf- almost like just inflated. Yeah, didn't and it? basically what happened was the, the 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 inner layers of his skin had separated from the skull. Yeah. So basically, it was all a bit wibbly wobbly up there. Yeah. Um, his scalp had detached itself but, from his skull, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was life threatening. Mm. It was life threatening. That's when, from what I found out as well, that's when uh, Jim Segala, the scientist, mm. also gets involved at right. that point. And Makes he sense. said, now this is the interesting thing about this. He said that the injury that um, Thomas experienced paralleled really heavily with um, an energy beam being fired on human flesh. And as we know, there's been plenty of those leaving the ranch. Yeah, those beams. so they've, been, they've seen these um, beams on infrared light. They they later on I'll go into that later but they do set up a, a nighttime stakeout and they yeah. see it all they see all this yeah. on the infrared they basically um, they sit and they watch the ridge don't they actually I'll go through it see. now actually come to think of it you know yeah. so it actually works out later on that day so after you know they've gone into that sinkhole they've seen everything else about that they've experienced um, all the vertigo and nauseousness and, and such they decide yeah. yeah okay we're gonna stake it out overnight we're gonna use one of our little hideouts yeah and we're gonna watch the ridge. We're going to observe it. And shit starts happening. Shit starts happening. They start seeing um, beams of light, beams of infrared light coming mm. out, of, out of the ground. At one point, the ridge itself starts glowing at the top. Yeah. Um, they also... Right. What, was, what I found really interesting was that they fired um, a high-powered laser at it so that they could basically... They knew which part of the ridge that the, the camera was pointed at. Mm-hmm. And it was reflecting the laser into mm. the camera. Yeah, it was shooting the, the shooting the signal back, wasn't it? The rock it? Yeah. was like reflecting. Rock was reflecting the mm. the laser. Which I, I guess mean, you could expect some sort of reflection if it was maybe like limestone or or something that would be that would have a, a you know reflective surface like or, or crystalline. Yeah, or something. like yeah. crystallized sort of surface to it, but. It doesn't. Yeah, it's I mean, solid, I'm, it's I mean, I'm no, rock. I'm no physicist or anything like that. So no, I'm not a geologist either. I don't, that I, as well. I don't know. So I don't know what the the the, the mechanical, yeah. um, yeah. the mechanics of of that is. Yeah. You know, so it, it's it's interesting. It's it still quite interesting. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. But then after that, as soon as they located exactly where that was, where it was, well, I mean, Travis seemed to be quite taken with that. I thought that was very odd. And he's mm. an astrophysicist, so. Yeah. He should have a good understanding of how light works. Yeah. Um, but at one point, the the battery on on the laser just depletes. Yeah. Done. Conks it's out. It's not going to yeah. work anymore. Yeah. That's it. Sorted. Um, then, <laughs> which is really really odd, um, close to dawn, Thomas again starts feeling the pain on the back of his head. Yeah. And th- this was alarming pain, because yeah. of the the previous injury that he had. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, that's when Jim, the the scientist, he, he said, "Yeah, this this is when this coincides with uh, a laser or an energy beam that is aimed at human tissue." So, was he attacked again? They were trying to get him again. Yeah. yeah, and what was odd was that in the documentary they actually do a side by side of the previous injury mm. 
a CAT scan of the previous injury and a CAT scan of the, the current in injury, and it's the same thing. It's almost the same, yeah. Now, which you, you could you could probably argue maybe there was a, a, a strange genetic predisposition to a condition that's like yeah, that. Yeah, true. That is experienced it in the same place. Yeah. And are they... Causation doesn't necessarily... Or the correlation doesn't necessarily indicate causation, does it? Yeah. So just because it happened on the ranch again doesn't necessarily it's mean... It's the ranch that's doing it, yeah. yeah. It could just be, yeah. Coincidence. It could be coincidence. <laughs> Coinkydink. <laughs> yeah. Most certainly. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, more coincidences. Because yeah, <laughs> we love those. Yeah, because yeah, they keep yeah. popping up at that's this it. place. Yeah. Um, they decide that they're going to get um, some outside help in. They commission um, a drone thermography expert yeah, okay yeah so this is where basically what they do is they send a drone up into the sky um it's got infrared um and thermo imaging on it um it's an incredible piece of kit 35 grand for one of these drones wow. with all the kit that's on it just absolutely brilliant it's definitely something out of call of duty mm. basically um and so the geezer looked like it was out of call of duty as well he was built <laughs> like that yeah i think i wouldn't want to mess with him no, i don't exactly. want to break his drone no but um what the the whole purpose of it was that they could try and find some anomalies underneath the surface mm. that would give off a different heat signature. Makes so sense, obviously yeah. various rocks give off different heat signatures yeah. and such, so they would be able to see some sort of um, abnormalities underneath the surface. Um, they get like a quick demonstration of it in the general pastures of the ranch. So this is near mm. like the HQ. So they said, like, right, okay, we've had most of our activity over by Homestead 2. Let's head over there and let's get it going. Well, they do, and um, they can't connect. They can't connect to the drone. The drone won't connect to the handheld controls. Just straight up won't do it. And <laughs> the guy looks really perplexed. He's like, this has never happened. This doesn't happen at all. He's like, I can, I can fly this like miles up, and the, the connection will still be bang on. Mm. And he's standing right next to it, and he's like, I can't get a connection. There's some sort of interference with the signal mm. and at this point that's when they get out their tri-field meters and the meters are going all over the scale they, 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 they're, they're popping off they're peaking they're, mm. and they're going yeah these are technically dangerous levels of radiation that yeah. we're picking up here um, so and also this is another point where the phone batteries dry, drained out as well so at this point again at this point in the day the batteries are draining out that's mad, isn't it? And it's yeah. all happening around this whole All fully charged, too. ready to go for a day's work. Oh, and madness. they're just... Yeah, just just done. Yep, no, yep. we're not connecting to... Yeah, we're not going to work now. Yep, it's not going to happen. Just when you want us to. Yeah. It's not happening. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. But this is something that I thought was a really good idea. And this again, this was what kind of um, cemented it in my mind that this wasn't just a load of acting hocus pocus or yeah, whatever yeah that these were genuine investigators mm. you know that these are real people that are actually really trying to find out they're not just creating a tv show yeah um so using the tri-field tri-field meters the team were actually able to detect the direction of where these these um waves of energy are coming from mm. so it seems a bit rudimental but basically what they did was they got a great big coffee can emptied it out and put the, the meter inside of it and right. what that does the coffee can what that does it allows um, it blocks out all the ambient noise that you would just have naturally anyway because yeah. everything's got a vibration everything's emitting something mm. um, and they were able to detect exactly where it's coming from right now they used three different points on the ranch three random points on the ranch to triangulate where this was coming from and they all thought oh, I was coming out of the ground, you know, because that seems to be where every, anything that happens is coming out of the ground right? because of the sinkhole they were yep. experiencing it coming out yep. of there. But what they actually find was the source is actually triangulated almost a mile, or a little over a mile, above them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're like, say what now? Yeah. So the radiation so was coming from above them, about a mile like a up. a blanket of radiation above the run well they were able to triangulate it triangulate so it's coming it, right. from a it, source right that was sitting about a mile above homestead two a little off from home not directly above it but a little off but a little off yeah. of it so they were like almost like something's hovering up there emitting these waves of electromagnetic force 
and energy. So they're like, right, okay, this is a bit odd. Um, so now they've got to try and get a mile up to try and get some readings. And it, it seems a bit rudimental, but it works. Um, they get a weather balloon. One of these... Oh, good old weather balloon. We do love a weather balloon. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't commission an owl. The, the bane of uh, UFO <laughs> yeah. existence is frigging weather balloon. Yeah, tell me about it. But it's... It, it, what they do is re it's really quite. It seems rudimental because they're just taping meters to to sticks and then putting them on a balloon and up it goes. But they're getting readings, and what they do is they put um, a trifield trifield meter. What am I even trying? I don't to know. Say? You can't say that today, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're putting up the uh, the meters, <laughs> trifield meters, <laughs> <laughs> and a camera as well to see because obviously it doesn't um, it doesn't record. The meters don't record. They just read that's it um and they attempt to re to reach about a mile up now unfortunately what happens is as they're trying to bring it back down the rope snaps and oh it floats off balloon, doesn't it? off yeah. it goes like that and yeah. but luckily enough they, they follow it though don't they well luckily enough it's at an altitude where it's not gaining anymore it's just right. it's just falling so eventually they go back and they they recover the balloon and they think right okay well we're gonna just go for it so they Strap it up with all the, the same equipment again. Yeah. Um, but instead of putting a camera on it, they put a GPS tracker on it, yeah. which will track exactly what altitude it's hitting, um, its direction and everything. And they do that hoping that it goes through the, the point at which they triangulated at. So they, they based or they they took note of where the wind was going, etc. And they were just like, oh, hope. When we let it go, yeah, we hope it goes through that point. And... Luckily enough, it actually does. They got it right, and they are able to track it on the um, on the uh, receiver that they got in the hub. Yeah, as well. So this is the really, really interesting bit. They're able to track its movements, and once it reaches about ten thousand feet above sea level, mm. just stops transponding. Just stops, and the guy that's there that they got in to do the GPS tracking and whatnot. He's like, well, that's never happened. These things go like 100,000 feet in the air. Like, mm. these these are weather balloons. These go up to yeah. near orbit. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's never it happened shouldn't be before. cutting out, yeah. Now, 10,000 feet above sea level puts them about 5,000 feet below that, which is right. a mile. So <laughs> at about a mile up, where they triangulated this source of electromagnetic field coming from, it, conks it stops. Just stops transponding. They don't know where this balloon goes after that. It just stops. Which is really weird. That is weird. Now that, make of that what you will, guys. Yeah. I mean, There's specific, something, but... Something yeah. stops it. A now yeah. they, they let it off and they, get, they go straight into the hub. So they're not watching it yeah. or anything like that. So there's, they can't... Really, they should have left someone out there to, to at least Watch track it, it with yeah. the eye. See if something bit, hit it or... Or if it yeah, disappears yeah. or something like that. But Or it gets shot down or, you know... Yeah, but, but even if it got shot down, then it, you would it would match the altitude because it was... I suppose, yeah, when it drops, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it, it's yeah, transponding yeah. every minute. Yeah. And then they're, they're sitting there going, yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't given us a new signal for a couple of minutes now. Oh, and so when was the last one? About 10,000 feet above sea level. <laughs> about a mile ago. Yeah, about a mile ago <laughs> is when... <laughs> You know, they they're about five thousand feet above sea level themselves. Right. So when you add another five thousand to that, it puts it at about a mile up. Absolutely incredible finding right there, right off the bat. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's something that's happening around that sort of point. So the good thing is about this is they then try to replicate it by using slightly different means. So they're trying to get the same sort of readings. So right. what he does is Travis brings in. Um, an undergraduate who's a rocket specialist and she comes and she's built these rockets that will send it at least a mile up um so what they do is they sh strap a load of sensors to the rockets um ones that can actually record what is going on as well mm. um and they send them up um and this is when the uh, the cattle start reacting now you'd think that they'd, so before they've even set off the first rocket suddenly the, the cattle have come right up close to the helipad 
where they're going to be right. launching these rockets. Um, and they, they take note of it. They're like, oh, they're acting strange, mm. you know, because they don't usually do that. They'll just be off. Yeah. But they're all congregated together, herded right. up, like, you know, something's like about. they're spooked by something. Like they're or, spooked, yeah. but they're all standing there. They're all watching what's going on. Yeah. So they've sent a couple of couple of rockets up, and there's a few failed attempts, um, as there would be with anything like this. And um, then all of a sudden, the, the, the cows get spooked, and they start running off. They start running off away from the helipad. But not only that, but they also start nutting each other. Like, I say, headbutting each other. Um, yeah, because that means something else in America, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you corrected that. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of show. It wasn't that kind of show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over here, for the longest time, only up until recently, nothing meant headbutting someone. Headbutting, yeah. No, it means something very different. <laughs> it means something very different. The cows weren't, weren't doing that. They weren't doing that. I mean, that would that would also be weird, but that would be really yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, what's going on over there? Hang about. Yeah. <laughs> the cows are acting weird. <laughs> it's out of season for all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no bullock in there. <laughs> yeah, so they were headbutting. Headbutting, each other. yes. Headbutting each other. They weren't doing the other thing. No, no. This is a kids' show. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that was that was strange. Yeah, um, it was really strange. <laughs> really odd. Yeah, but stranger still, um, the whole team started seeing UFOs in the sky. Actually, seeing lights in the sky, um, several times over, and they even captured it on CCTV. Now, luckily enough, whilst they were doing this, um, Eric, the the principal investigator, who was like oh, straight away run into the HQ because to see whether or not there was any um, uh, transponder data for. Flights. flights yeah now there was a couple of flights over but they could see them those yeah. flights were there you could see the trails and everything else you could say that is a plane but it was like it was it was coming into vision getting bright and they said that it was moving so you could see the glint as well so that you could see yeah. that it was moving but then it was like it was just fading away like it was just completely mm, yeah weird yeah yeah it's just like it just really it was weird. just coming in and out of reality mm. almost, um, and yeah, like I said, they were able to capture it on CCTV. It doesn't do it any justice, and it probably doesn't even do it any justice seeing it through their filming, mm. like actually being there and seeing something in the sky, and their yeah. reaction seemed very genuine as well, very right. very genuine. Yeah. Um. So a couple of days go by, probably more like a couple of weeks, and um. Travis was woken up in the middle of the night by the ranch's dog. Um, and he was able to detect an unusually regular microwave signature that ranged from 250 megahertz up to 2 gigahertz. Wow. Now, that is um, a level that would... And it was a consistent level of signal as well. And it would be like... The way in which he put it was if all the radio stations in the whole of the United States all started playing the same song at exactly the same time. That's how consistent this um, signal would be. Like even, even the earth has pulses mm. and which you can um, measure on these various different devices. But this was like a regular signal all the way up and down the wavelength. And it was, I don't know what to make of that, but it's certainly something that's very, very strange. But also on the CCTV footage of the hut that he's staying in, off in the distance in the sky, something goes like that. At the time that he comes out and starts investigating around because the dog's going schizo. Wow. So there's more yeah. lights in the sky. This is. I'm so glad that they're starting to get this sort of stuff out there now. That is. Yeah. And it's it's not dramatization. No, it's, it's not, not been doctored anything or like anything. That. Or yeah, no. So the next stage, because uh, of the investigation, comes about because Dragon, bless him, <laughs> <laughs> he's scared about digging because he's yeah. he, he's he's head of security. So his main concern is keeping everyone safe. So yeah. he's like he's very much under the influence that when you start digging, bad things happen. Um, As has already been experienced it's already been yeah, yeah. it's already happened yeah. several times yeah potentially yeah definitely. um 
So they think of less invasive ways of digging. Mm. So the best way to do it at the moment is ground penetrating radar. Yeah. Um, so they get a team in um, to come and do things uh, among the various different electrical difficulties that they have. So where batteries are drained and everything and they seem perplexed like, no, these were fully charged last night and I'm, you know, it's on amber. That's not right. So again, batteries to be being depleted mm. when they go onto the onto the uh, ranch. Um, what they do find now is really quite interesting. Okay. So the way in which they conduct this experiment, the, yeah. these findings, is that they basically they drag the radar equipment on the back of the um, golf buggy. Really. All oh, right. Okay. Um, but they're going at a nice slow speed on the ranch road. Which mm. takes them past, and it's sending a pulse into the ground as they drag it, aren't they? Pulsing so they're, they're, back up and yeah. down, up and down. It's yeah. basically it's like it's the, exactly the same yeah. way that sonar works. Yeah, it's sending the signal down, it's bouncing back up, and they're being able to read it. But they read it in a very it's, it's a linear sort of thing. Mm. So they're able to get whatever is sitting underneath the ground and yeah. below it mm. as well. Now, as they're going past um, Homestead Two, mm. believe it or not, they discover anomalies between eight to 25 feet, eight feet and 25 feet below the surface. But these okay. anomalies stretch for a thousand feet. How do you Now, this is, what's furthermore, these are what seem to be smooth dome-like structures that can be detected that, like I say, run for about a thousand feet. Also, based on the imagery of the data, it looks like a football. So okay. an American football, right? Okay, you know. So, um, or Arnold's head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, um, now, obviously, this is like a the, the imagery that they've put up is 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 a cross section. So they don't have enough data to be able to do a full three D rendering of what it is that's underneath the surface. Right. Um, if they had more time, yeah, they'd be able to back and forth, back and forth, create a grid, mm. and then they'd be able to find exactly what sort of shape it Get is. Get a 3D model from that, perhaps, from above, yeah. and see exactly what's going on there. Yeah. Now, the guy that's running the 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 equipment, he says, you know, this would be consistent with, say, a tunnel, um, underneath a there. Cave system. Oh, a cave system. <laughs> cave system. Underground cave system where mm. there's paranormal activity. Who would have thought Never. it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a large deposit of quartz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You exactly. Know, you yeah. never know. Um, yeah. So he was he was saying that you yeah, know this is this sort of reading would mm. be consistent with something like that. Um, but then when they get the other piece of equipment over, they go, "Well, oh, actually, no. This seems a lot more solid than." All right than a tunnel system mm. or a cave at the very least or a cavern um and what's really really interesting is that not long after this when they're you know poking about round homestead too travis is hit with a harmful radiation that actually leaves radiation burns on him so he actually has radiation burns on his hand and on his face um and they he gets them checked out by the doctor and the doctor's like yeah those are radiation burns you oh, know shit. you need to be careful yeah yeah so they what's really strange about this is they later on they go back to the spot in which he experienced it and they go back with um, a radiation sweep with Geiger counters and everything there's nothing there's nothing but background noise there's no spikes mad. nothing that's mad because he's quite hot on it Travis isn't he even right from the get go in, in the first mm. episode they go and investigate a uh, cattle mutilation yeah and he gets out his Geiger counter there, and the, the thing is spiking, yeah, like and, and then dropping and then spiking again. Yeah, it's and the trifield meter that he's is that it he's that using. is it yeah. right? Yeah, when he's using that and it's going all over the shop. Yeah, yeah. and because that, that was one of the first things he wanted to um, well, that, check for, wasn't well, it? That right there is, um, that's kind of like a like preview as to what happens later on. Right. Okay. Um, so that actual event happens much much later on in in the investigation. Oh, okay. More so toward right. the end of the summer. Right. Gotcha. Um, okay. But what they do before that happens is they actually introduce a pair of alpacas onto the ranch. Right, okay. So the idea is there being an exotic animal that has never been on the ranch mm. before. Let's introduce it. Let's see what this... How it reacts. How yeah. it reacts to... How the ranch reacts mm. to, to the new animals or how the animals react to the ranch. Um, as, you know, and, the, and the, this was it. it was put, the purpose was to provoke a reaction. And right. seemingly they got it, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But... 
before that, after they got all this radiation and these ground penetrating radar things happening around Homestead 2, they decide, right, okay, now is time for a bit more invasive digging. So they start doing core samples. So they start drilling core samples into the ground. Um, and when they start hitting around about 18 feet, Melts, they can't, go, it? They can't no. go any further. Right. They can't go any further. The the drilling um, truck, mm. it's, it starts smoking. So the drill mm. bit starts smoking. It's not going any further than, than that. They bring out the core sample. They start testing it for radiation. There's nothing. Nothing at all. But then... Um, this obviously provokes a reaction because one of the alpacas gets slashed up. And I mean, like, proper, like... Like, diced up. <laughs> yeah, like he spent a night in, in London, sort of, <laughs> sliced up. You know, it, it gets it gets proper jacked by something. Now, the, the main CCTV camera that is on the alpaca pen goes down. But part of the attack is actually captured on another camera that didn't go down and it's amongst all the, the noise and everything it, the noise is fucking horrific it's like hearing pigs Getting that, that sort of whatever, like yeah. screaming sort yeah. of thing there is something that's attacking them there's something that is actually attacking this al alpaca and it's below the um it's below the grass so it's in the grass but you can see at certain points something leaping mm. up and grabbing hold of it which, based on what we know and what we've discussed already, is the the trait of a skinwalker. Yeah, and they're on Navajo land. So well, they're, well, they're on Ute land. Oh, Ute land. Sorry, Ute land. But, but a reservation. Sorry, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but yeah, the um, the surrounding reservations are all Ute as mm. well because the Navajo have yeah been well and truly kicked out of that area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's quite horrific really listening to what is happening and the, mm. the animals are being attacked by something right and i know that, that people most most people go that can't be real can't be real but i don't see this documentary harming animals for the sake of a documentary oh yeah I, you, you know, know i wouldn't i don't think any of them have got it in them to to kind of be like that they'd much rather you know they're men of science as much as what you might think about them and mm. what they're investigating might be kooky or whatever. There are men of science. They've got that integrity. And, you know, they don't all seem to be fans of the superstitions and the paranormal no. and whatever. And a lot of them going into it supposedly didn't believe in it. Mm. So they're going into it using the tools and the equipment and the knowledge that they've got to almost try and debunk a lot of the things that are going on. But some of it is so compelling that they can't debunk it. Mm. And they've got all the best you know, equipment and software and gadgets and whatever. So, like, if, if it's happening, they're going to find it. Yeah. So, I mean, I know I didn't, you know, much like the audio that I I mentioned in the, the video I, I watched, it, it doesn't sound like it's been doctored in. Like, it's a sound effect that they've yeah. dropped in no, to no, create it in post-production or whatever. It seems very much... What I would be interested in finding out is um, whether they documented the injuries, because the injuries are, are severe. Yeah. Like, there is a lot of blood. Um, and they, they seem to be very deep. Whether or not they documented them and sent them off for analysis, that would be interesting. if they could link it to an animal, yeah. Yeah, or, or if it was like, they could tell like... A, like if it was a coyote or a if mountain lion. A pathologist lion would be able to go, it's a blade, or yeah. it's a claw of some sort, or, or, or that's a tooth mark, or something. Yeah. You know, that that would have been... I don't know if they've done that. It doesn't indicate that in, in the documentary, but yeah. maybe something comes back in season two. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I'd like for that to happen yeah, because at least be they could narrow down exactly what it was that was attacking that alpaca. Yeah, definitely. Um, then, not long after that, they, like you say, they dis discover a dead cow right by right, yeah, yeah. right by the helifield, yeah. uh, which is right near the, uh, the, the central control. Yeah. Um, now, this... This cow was seemingly a very healthy two-year-old cow. So it wasn't old, mm. it wasn't sick or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and like like what you said, the team measured huge EMF readings. Yeah, loads. Off of yeah. this cow. Yeah. Like there's there's no evidence as to how it's died. There's no injuries. There's no cuts. It was seemingly nothing. a healthy, fit and well. Just dropped down. Two-year-old cow. Yeah, it just dropped. Yeah. Just dropped dead. No explanation. No injuries. Certainly no external injuries. Yeah. And the, the, the tri-field meters were popping off the scale, and that was co coinciding with those mobile phone malfunctions. Yeah, as well. So it was it was 
they had the mobile phone sitting there like that and the, the, the yeah. tri-field meter next to it. And as the phone's winging out, the meter's going up and down. It's, yeah. it's going all over the place. So something was happening at that point. Which is what, yeah, what, what killed it. Yeah. yeah, so they call out a vet mm. and he does um, an autopsy. Or they call it a necrotopsy or something like yeah. that, I think it is. But um, it's basically it's an autopsy in the field. Yeah. Um, and uh, that gives you an idea as to how a cow could potentially be mutilated and it took this geezer a while to get into to this cut cow. cut through it, yeah. 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 It took a it while. It wasn't easy, yeah. No, no, not at all. So for these cows to be mutilated and to have, you know, organs and that missing and whatever yeah. else, it's not just going to be done by a couple of sickos jumping a field and, you know, deciding to do it for shits and giggles. It's it's going to take heavy it's gonna take hardware a while. to do it. It's going to take and a it's while. It's going to be loud. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it takes messy. a bit to kill a cow, I would yeah. have thought, you know. It's like something... And also there would be... To, to kill a cow as well, that surely there must be like evidence of a bolt in the head or a yeah. gunshot or so, something, something like that, a wound yeah. of something yeah. like that. But in all of these Nothing. various different yeah. cattle mutilations, not just on Skinwalker, but across the world, mm. there's no such, there's no. no gunshot wounds or anything like they're that. They're like bolt, you know, if you, you know, like when you're, when they're slaughtering, yeah, you push, you put done. the bolt in their head. Yeah, there's nothing like that. Nothing, yeah. nothing like that at yeah. all. Um, so this vet does the autopsy and finds that the cow died because of an acute pneumonia brought on by stress. Yeah, I remember that now. The stress bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I forgot about the pneumonia, but yeah, which I can understand because, oddly enough, um, my neighbour, um, she's now known. Lesser, she'll she'll find this funny if she does listen. I don't think she does. <laughs> right. She's known as the cat killer. Um, right okay she's, she's not really a cat killer um but bless her the neighbor on the other side of her had a very old cat um and it got into the garden mm. into her garden and um they've got a dog and the dog's fine it's not dangerous it doesn't didn't attack it just kept barking at this cat and this cat was so old that it couldn't get out and eventually it just killed over because of stress so um, it was panicked because of the dog barking at it. Yeah. It was too old to jump to back jump over out. the fence. It was, so it died through panic. It died through panic. <laughs> like stress. Yeah. So <laughs> Poor it, thing. it does happen. Mm. Um, and yeah, they, they, they basically go in and out of exactly what happened to this cow and how it would have died because of this pneumonia. Yeah. Um, but what was really, really weird as well was that the rest of the herd were on the far side of the ranch, the most western point they could get. They've never been over there. Not in the whole time that this herd had been introduced to the ranch. Never been over there. But it was literally the furthest point that they could get away from this one dead cow. Bloody hell. It was just... So like, they must have picked up on something as well. They picked they up on something. They, they shot off. Now, um, <laughs> the there haven't been any cattle deaths, of any strange cattle deaths in, yeah. in three years. Uh, potentially even longer, I think it was, right. that they were saying. Um, and because obviously now there's a, a cattle that's died, yeah. they got in the one person that knows everything that there is to know about cattle mutilations or animal mutilations, yeah. and that is Linda Moulton Howe. Yeah. Um, she's fantastic. Like the work that she's yeah, done. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. For <laughs> decades in yeah. the field, literally in the field, mm. looking at yeah. these mutilated animals. Yeah. And um, she, ultimately, she can't actually apply any of her expertise because there's no mutilation that's happened. Yeah. Um, it's spotless from it's only from the, the autopsy outside. that's yeah, that the that's strange yeah, yeah that, that, is, that is strange that what that has actually happened here yeah but ultimately this cow just killed over now what they actually do discover a bit later on is this cow dying was caught on cctv oh really it was caught on cctv oh wow they see this cow lying down in the spot they actually see it drop down into a spot and then it lies down and it brings its head up. And at the moment that it brings its head up, they pause it because it's at that moment that they find some that they actually see something directly above the cow in the sky. And it's an object, a black object, that very much looks like the tic tac. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? It looks very much like the tic tac. Wow. Um now in the interest of time, I want to go over this really quick because I am overrunning. But potentially, I mean, this is this is basically what happens was when they examined the CCTV footage a bit closer, it showed, and they slowed it down frame by frame, it shows that the cow reacted to the object as it comes into frame. Mm. So the cow's lying down, the object comes into frame as the cow puts its head up. 
Then in the next frame, literally the next frame, I, th- I can't, I don't know what the refresh rate is, but the next yeah. frame, it was, it moved further toward the distance. So basically, this put this object moving way faster than any conventional craft that we have, at, or any bug or bird mm. or any animal or anything like that, and it calculated a speed at approximately one thousand feet per second. Bloody hell. We, we we don't we don't have anything we don't like possess that, anything that we like know that. of <laughs> yeah. um, and yeah like I said this this object looks very very much like the same sort of object that was in the tic tac footage and the yeah. gimlin footage. No, um, gimlin. I know I know the I know the one. <sighs> I know the footage you mean. Yeah, the, the, from the fighter pilot. Yeah, the, exactly. The government fighter pilot who released it all. Yeah, David Fravor. Mm. Um, the yeah, uh, Captain Fravor. He's his footage and everything else like that. Um, I'm, I'm, it's not Gimlin it's something else it, it escapes yeah. my mind at the yeah. moment I feel like yeah. right plonker <laughs> <laughs> but it's there yeah, and it, yeah. is, it, is, it looks exactly like it wow really okay. really weird um, and yeah like I said they, they later on go on to find more things about the ranch yeah. that coincide with this um, uh, triangulated point of radiation that's about just, a mile up I'm just yeah. going to leave it there right. because they are able to zoom out and they're able to map something incredible right okay so guys go and check that out <laughs> yeah definitely. And i'm gonna leave you right there on that cliffhanger i've watched it before but i'm gonna have to catch holy up holy yeah. shit is uh you have to watch it again what to refresh i said when i watched it it was just yeah. f- absolutely phenomenal what it is that they find and it just pushes them right into the next season because this it's got to, it's got to keep on going yeah this investigation's got to keep going yeah exactly yeah. um and you know what i before we get off the fence, the one thing I will say about this is that yeah. I think <clears throat> this um, Brandon Fugel taking over mm. is the right thing that's happened because he's able to to funnel a load of private money into it. Yes. That means yeah. that he can also, and this is the interesting thing as well. Um, in, uh, when was it? 2017, um, Skinwalker Ranch was filed as a trademark. So, and, oh right! And they managed to get it, um, and then in April of 2020, the mark became applicable to, and I quote, providing recreation facilities, entertainment services, namely creation, development, production, and distribution of multimedia content, internet content, motion pictures, and television shows. Right, so the government okay. cannot stop them from releasing what they find. Yeah, because it's for entertainment purposes. Yeah, exactly. So supposedly, supposedly, yeah. That yeah. right there is a fucking good workaround. That's yeah. a good way of get, keeping the government stopping out them of your from findings. shutting you up. Yeah. How brilliant is that? Yeah, that's clever. Yeah. Very, very. Because some people would think, book. you know, that the skeptic would think that they've done that because they're going to sign up to a load of TV shows, dramas. You know, they're going to make a film about the ranch. They're going to bring out merch and internet shows and mm. you know whatever else well i tell you what if, if that is what they're doing if they're dramatizing all of it then they've done really well to just get average looking people yeah to act yeah and who yeah. seemingly don't look like actors because yeah. they're quite awkward unless they're really good at it and yeah. not acting awkward on camera but absolutely so i mean yeah I mean, we've, we've both kind of covered very very different subjects here in the yes. you know skinwalker ranch the only reason why it's called skinwalker ranch is because there's high strangeness and it, it well that's the only connection really is that it's called skinwalker ranch um well there has um obviously the on various, the ranch there have actually been possible sightings of, of what people would believe to be a, a skinwalker or the shermans when they first bought it um the you know these guys i don't know whether, i don't think it's in this documentary but i'm sure in something else i've watched they do a bit of a a longer investigation on homestead 2 Mm. and they bring back a guy who he's not been there for like 20 plus years or something and he had a skinwalker experience he yeah. like he was roaming around one of the outbuildings and he heard something going on in one of the others and as he's turned around and his flashlight has caught something standing in the window these are all dilapidated buildings at yeah. this point so it's like the ruins of a um a, a sort of an outbuilding. I, I can't remember what the use would have been, but if you imagine like a, a, a disused farm building huh. with the windows smashed out, and as he sort of turned around, you see that his camera sort of picks something up that's kind of like, Whoop, and then it sort of ducks behind a, you know, sort of moves behind a wall. So I think so. There's so yeah. The the, the link is obviously because it was you know cursed by the the Navajo. It's used by the the U. It's mm-hmm. a reservation. 
typically it's that culture and, and those locations where you're going to find you know skinwalkers which could easily be one of the explanations for the mutilations because there's been many mutilations on on that well, there's been that, a lot of land. daylight mutilations as well yeah and exactly, that's what i didn't yeah. say before about that one is potentially they stopped an, another daylight mutilation of that of that cow yeah that potentially if they didn't find because they found it within less than half an hour of it dying mm. so if uh, they hadn't it would have it could have been mutilated right there but, on their because they doorstep. spotted it yeah Right on their doorstep. They scarpered and it left the cow intact <laughs> with all its, uh, you know, organs and whatever. So, yeah, yeah but no, you, you couldn't also go over Skinwalkers without going over the ranch because there is a, a link, you know, albeit tenuous. Mm. You know, there have also been some, you know, possible, uh, well, there have been mutilations possibly linked to, you know, the Skinwalker. There has been yeah. a couple of notable, you know, sort of sightings. Um, but again, it's another creature, you know, or, or cryptid that's heavily linked to UFO activity, mm. uh, and I think that's the link, you know, in itself. Um, There's a huge you know, paranormal as well. link with UFO ca- activity and paranormal activity. There's some, there was yeah. something to it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose we now's the time to get off the fence with it, sort of thing. Yeah. I, I, with regards to skinwalkers, mm. yeah, I, I believe that there is an element to it it's more yeah i don't necessarily believe that they can actually change into the form of something else or someone else but yeah. there is certainly a paranormal element that allows mm. that person to access certain parts of consciousness that we can't access just on regular days you know or whatever yeah but our neurotypical setup um yeah definitely i think it, yeah and as, yeah, I agree. Yeah. As for like the Skinwalker Ranch, um, I do like some of the the. the it's so wishy washy. The critics of it, they are so wishy washy. Like it's just it's people that just don't want to believe in it. Do you know just the be- for the sake of the not best believing one it? One that I could come up with, collective de- delusion. <laughs> yeah. Collective delusion. Yeah. So the <laughs> the possibility could well be that nothing truly out of this world actually happens on the ranch, mm. but no one is actually lying about it either it's a shared psychosis so they all believe in what they're seeing but it's not actually happening yeah yeah a shared psychosis or yeah. shared delusional disorder um with that many people a psychic well this is apparently this isn't a psychiatric uh, syndrome whereby otherwise he- otherwise healthy people share an idiosyncratic belief or deception basically everyone's just imagining it yeah i'm sorry but that's like I don't know. I, I mean, That's I could like get that. Amy Schumer in a wetsuit, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amy Schumer in a wetsuit. It's a bit of a stretch, yeah. isn't it? Let's a bit be of honest. a stretch. I like it. Well played. <laughs> it's not one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. Um, but, but that's like, it's better than it's just owls. You know, it's... At least there's something to it, I guess. I mean, I, I could oh, believe I that know, for man. some like of the... Collective delusion, collective psychosis. Not in, not in this like... case. I think in, in some of the, like, the Bigfoot documentaries or something I've watched, you know, you, you can... You could look, watch those, and think either it's all complete bollocks, and they're all in on it. Utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. Sorry, it's all um, <laughs> either yeah, just complete and utter nonsense, and they're all just buying into it, mm. and they're just looking to make a quick buck and fool some people. Which is what they were saying about the Shermans. Which is what they were saying about the Shermans. Or yeah, it, it could just be that one person is just so into it and believes it so much that. They've yeah, somehow you... managed to convince everyone else. Mm. So I could say to you, "Did you did you see that over there? Like that shape?" And I could describe it, and I could I could look at you and be like, mm. "That really like did happen." And you could be like, "Oh, uh, yeah, no, I think I did see something." Like you could start convincing yourself that yeah. something. And then a couple of weeks know, later, you ask me about it. And go, yeah, I did see it. And then that's built and built and built, and the more we people just... are involved and blah blah. blah. So we I... said about the false memories, didn't we? Yeah, um, we we said this about yeah. uh, what, a couple of a couple of episodes back, quite a number of quite episodes a few, back. Yeah, now. Now. yeah, yeah. So I think so I think it's. I think it's possible in in sort of isolated circumstances. In this, though, I, I don't believe that's the case. Mm. But I, I think, yeah, just quickly with skinwalkers, yeah, I do believe that it is a thing. I, th- I believe it's more paranormal um, and more spiritual um, mm. than natural cryptid. So I, you know, I believe that there are these these witches, um, the, you know, witch witch doctors, whatever they may be, um, that you know do these rituals that do have this spiritual sort of connection and and you know they will go out and kill an animal and then wear its carcass and you know then 
believe that they can then run really fast or have the strength of the bear. I think it's all kind of mind mind over matter. Mind over matter. It's all spiritual. And so I, I, I believe that, as you say, whether or not they actually do change into these creatures or whether they do possess other people, that I'm probably less likely to... Um, Hmm. to sort of believe at this point just from what i've read and where, where everything seems to be pointing so but but in essence yeah i think the the skinwalker based on its origin not so much how hollywood have done it but certainly based on the navajo belief i do hmm. think there is something uh to it with regards to the ranch yeah it's not just about you know cattle mutilations and some sort of you know creature being on the land and you know sort of killing them you know i think there's you know, there's a lot more at play. Um, yeah. You know, it's paranormal, it is, you know, spiritual, it's UFO. You know, it could be cryptid as well, depending on, you know, what they find on the land. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more to it than meets the eye. And I think there's more to it than what a lot of people would be willing to, uh, you know, sort of, um, you know, give it credit for. Yeah. I think. Um, and that's just from the, you know, the, the, I mean, I, I have watched it before, but not for a while. But obviously, I've been rewatching it recently in, in preparation for this. And yeah, there is um, a lot of it that is sort of inexplicable, really. Um, and the guys that they've got, they've cast it very well because I think they are scientists first. Mm. And they're just looking for the scientific fact. Yeah. Can this be proven? Is there a reason why this can is happening? Can we replicate it as well? Can we replicate it? Yeah. You know, can we capture it on audio or video, which seemingly they they have done and mm. you know they are continuing to do so yeah so i think there's yeah i think there's a lot lot to be said for the phenomena that that's happening there um and yeah like we joked about it but you know there could be underground you know cave systems there could be government involvement you know the, i was definitely it, government it, involvement it could there. be because of the tests yeah. and the, the nuclear tests and they've done that's disturbed the land and in itself you know created something um but yeah, there's a lot of it that even those guys can't explain. They've just got the facts, they've got the evidence, and they're like, well, this is what it looks like. This is what it kind mm. of has to be. There's no scientific or logical explanation other than, th you know, this is what's happening. Yeah. And yeah, as you as you have said, I'm you know I'm excited for season two, um, you know, to kind of see where they take it and to see whether they do provide any further evidence to some of the tests that they've done in season one. Mm. Um, and I think they owe it to themselves, really, to to do that. So I hope they, uh, yeah, because I hope they have done it. The one thing that I did notice as well when I was researching the ranch itself was that there wasn't really much in the way of uh, scientific findings before this. Yeah, because everything that was, you know, that, that Robert Bigelow that, that was involved with, yeah. the government were involved with as well. Mm. So everything was kept hush hush. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it seems like this is now. Now that it's mostly being privatized and it's yeah. private money going into it, we're starting to actually get the the real findings coming out, and that is exciting. Yeah, that is very exciting because people, especially with regards to UFOs, we've had disclosure on UFOs now. Yeah, we know that they exist. The government have acknowledged them. Mm. Um, the U.S. government has acknowledged them at the very least. I'm yeah. pretty sure the British government acknowledged them before the Americans did. Right. Um, but no one gives a shit. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. Because I think it's just been, we've had so many years of science fiction films, alien invasion films, yeah. UFO documentaries. It's not documentaries. just beyond the point of possibility for a lot of people, it's isn't been a, it? There's been a campaign mm. from day dot yeah. that people that have had abduction experiences and everything, they've all been labelled as whack jobs, crazies, yeah. mental. You know, that I oh, don't go near... Uh, because she got abducted by aliens yeah, you know yeah. it's that sort of thing <clears throat> yeah it's all of that yeah people go oh i don't believe in UFO. i don't believe in aliens or, or whatever it's like but i think well, it hang was... on a second but there's there's more data coming out now yeah you should be giving a fuck about this yeah really but should. i think the i think it's quite clever how it's all been timed and how it's all been released because you think you know the, the the americans had the you know the, the trump the Trump administration, mm. which everyone's, you know, attentions and energies were kind of concentrating on, you know, the world had, you know, COVID to distract them and to, you know, believe more in that, which obviously comes with its own, you know, conspiracies or beliefs or, yeah. or what, you know, whatever with that. Oh, and it just, just seems coincidental that within all that, the Americans then finally decide, oh, do you know what, we'll put out all of these declassified 
videos and photos and files proving that UFOs not only exist, but we've found them and, you know, we've kept yeah. them, you know, sort of contained. I mean, we'll do it now because everyone's so fucking bothered about COVID that then we'll th- this will yourselves. just fall under the radar. Yeah. And no yeah. one's really going to, no one's really going to pick up on it. So I think it was quite cleverly timed, mm. you know, really. And they've only, they've only declassified what they want us to know. Of course. You know, so there's still well, much more to the iceberg. Well, the actual, the actual um, work itself, the, the, the journal that they released, yeah. um, the document, sorry, that they released, it basically said, yeah, they exist, but we don't know what they are. Mm. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. We've acknowledged well, their bullshit. existence. We've that's found bullshit. them. That's I'm pretty sure yeah. you do know what it is, yeah. what they are, where they come from. You know, th- You've probably spoke to them. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Made contact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. There's loads of people yeah. out there that are whistleblowers in various different government yeah, exactly. agencies that have come out and said, yeah, they're in contact. Yeah, I was on this yeah. project and you know this got this got done and this is what was mm-hmm. found. and yeah. you know. There's too many of those that have come out yeah. that you can't just tarnish them all with the same brush. They're all con artists. They're all mental. Well, exactly, because they can't to get a bit of fame. They wouldn't all get those, you know, jobs, get the clearance, and given that responsibility, if the government thought that they were a live wire or that they were, you know, a risk to national security, well, yeah. or you know, so something must have happened between their tenure for them to stand back and go, Do you know, what? actually, this is more important, and we mm. need to blow the cover on this. Like Bob Lazar, for example, you know, I'm exactly surprised that I'm surprised of. he's still alive, like with the stuff that he's come out with and mm. the well, info tried, and the seems secrets. Like they've tried their best to to I deface think, the fella, yeah. to defamation. They've and tried, all of that. They tried their best, but you know, he's still, you know, still going strong and whatnot. Mm. So yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, for all of that. But uh, but no, in essence, yeah, I think there is a phenomena going on, you know, at the ranch. Um, mm. and Definitely, I think they're only just kind of cracking you know, the the source and, and, you know, some of the things that, you know, they do find. I hope they go back underground. I hope they I hope they find fantastic. a cave entrance or some sort of they opening. They find an object. Yeah, Because that seems something. to be what they were kind of alluding to in in, in season yeah. one. They they were alluding to a football-shaped object yeah. under the ground. And then once they, they discovered that, it? Travis yeah. got a bit, got shot with a bit of radiation. Yeah, and got visible burns and stuff. So, yeah, so I'm hoping they find a way of... Um, going back down there and mm. you know and sort of bl- you know blowing it all up as it were so um no I'll, I'll be interested to uh to watch it but no it's been a good one this i've yeah. enjoyed it it's had the two different elements it's had the the supernatural kind of cryptid you know element which is obviously what you know we wanted to sort of bring to people but you know as we said we couldn't do the skinwalker without looking at the ranch and, you know a tenuous link but linked you know everyone nonetheless knows it though. Uh, yeah and everyone knows it whether you've seen the documentary or you've read the articles or you know whatever it may be you mm. would or even if you you know you're in the area well, you, know, absolutely. you would have heard about it we were discussing about the popularity of, of different subjects that we've done mm. um and when i've spoken to people about like when they say like, oh, so what what's your episode then what you're recording this yeah, week yeah. And I go, oh skinwalkers and skinwalker ranch are like i'll be checking that out yeah you know like the majority of people have just yeah. gone yeah i know about i've heard of skinwalker ranch i yeah. don't know what's happening now mm. but i've heard about skinwalker ranch yeah exactly so i'd be interested to hear exactly what you guys have got to say about it so yeah yeah that seems no, to be, be um hopefully yeah. this will be a, a nice popular episode and hopefully you guys will really enjoy yeah. it hopefully it'll be uh, another one we've we've done you know we have done really well um you know with our with all our episodes you know we we mm. set ourselves you know quite a uh i mean at the time I, quite a higher number um of plays that we wanted to try and hit as a minimum you know per episode yeah um but that seems to be our minimum now or you know, <laughs> yeah, I know right? which which is just it's very humbling which is nuts yeah it's, very, it's, very it's amazing so I mean, thank you to all the regular listeners out there we yeah, really do appreciate it. it it does you know to some it might just be numbers but you know for us to think that there are other people mad enough to be listen, into all this. Listen to our bollocks. And it's not just us <laughs> rambling on um, for, you know, for however long. And this one obviously has overrun, as you'll uh, mm. as you'll come to realise. Um, but there was just, you know, too much content that we wanted to sort of go over. And, you know, we didn't want to half ass it no, if, we could, no, uh, if we could help it. Otherwise, you know, where's the point in, uh, in doing it in the first place? Absolutely. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully you'll uh, you'll stick around. Um, so I guess <laughs> brings it to a close. That does bring it? us to a close, doesn't yeah. it? Um, so yeah, it brings us to the end of uh, another episode. And as always, thank you for joining us, and more importantly, sticking with us as we've as we've just said. Um, as always, would uh, would again like to thank um, our amazing patrons, uh, Justin 
and uh, and James um, for your you know continued support. It is um, much appreciated. Um, and remember, guys, if um, you know if you'd like you know if you like what you hear, you too can support your favourite podcast by heading to patreon.com and searching for Cryptid Ramblers podcast. And uh, you know, as, as Scott said earlier, we've got a couple of tiers uh, to pick from, which should hopefully uh, offer um, enough enough perks to uh to tempt you so uh <laughs> hopefully <laughs> um big thank you again as always to uh the home of cryptid ramblers podcast our purpose-built studio here at hellfire creative uh, remember to head to hellfirecreative.com for more info on the services that the guys can uh, provide and if there is anything that takes your fancy um head over to hellfirestudio.uk to get 20% discount on any said services. Um, simply use our discount code CRYPTID at the checkout. Yep. And that's all you've got to do. Um, as we said before, um, a lot of work is still going on behind the scenes with our new merch store, which mm. we are really excited about. It's another um, local company that we get to work closely with. So yeah, we're, we're excited for that. Um, we're making our way through new designs. We do, well. yep. Yeah, as we rev- we are revamping some of the old ones, um, which for uh, Justin's benefit, um, we are beautifully well, modelling under our jumpers because yes, it's indeed. frigging freezing, it's <laughs> bloody cold. Um, so no zips today. Absolutely, but um, <laughs> we're also uh, creating some new ones mm. just to sort of freshen it up a bit, and um, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there'll be some fan favourites in there because <laughs> they are really good. If uh, I do say so yes, myself. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, and I guess as we're um, as we're remembering um, yes. to mention, we uh, will discuss or we will we'll give a teaser as to what the next um, episode will be. Mm-hmm. Um, now, with this obviously being bi-weekly, and uh, you know the holidays or, yeah. or Christmas coming up, um, we have technically only got one more. Um, recording yeah. um before the end of the year so we were toying with you know kind of what to do or whether we'd do a, a you know one of our usual episodes and then do a, another sort of special that we'd do during the week um but uh we've decided that we'll just do the one the main episode uh, in a couple of weeks time and we are going to do krampus yes we're going to do Krampus <laughs> just in time for uh yeah. the holidays um it's yeah it's uh it's a story, not so much a, a cryptid, admittedly, but it's um, it's it's certainly a story that we both, uh, you know, have, oh, have enjoyed and, uh, and do enjoy. Um, so, yeah, we'll have some fun sort of bringing that to... Oh, indeed. Everyone. I'm sure everyone's, you know, heard of it or seen the, the, the crappy film that came out a few years ago. Yeah, indeed. And <laughs> um, uh, just for, you know, the, 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 the benefit of our listeners, I will be practising my German accent. <laughs> oh god right so everyone's got that to look forward to so oh, uh, they do. Oh, they you've, do. You've, you've been warned it's a corker <laughs> <laughs> oh god you've been warned um and i apologize <laughs> in advance <laughs> on my behalf for, on scott's behalf for any offense caused <laughs> um well there can't be any worse than the butchering that we've done in yeah. previous episodes ain't so that right. um, ain't that right yeah so uh, at least we try yes we a do. for effort if nothing else <laughs> indeed <laughs> um so i think that's um I think that's covered it. Um, yes. I think we've actually managed to remember everything this time. Um, so, on that note, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Until next time. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I had. That's all I had. That's all I had. We got that.